This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back, you ain't gonna touch me, you not gonna do nothing, you are not above me, I bet you wish you was me, I know it, I know What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Only Friends Podcast. This is day number 20 of the WSOP, episode number 57 in the books. We're getting ready to rock. Happy Monday to everybody. Happy Melissa. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Yodoran on. <laughs> you did that to sabotage me. I did. I did. But more importantly, I, I want to hear about. Uh, I want to hear about your weekend. Were there any young gentlemen callers, perhaps with roses, in the uh, no. Valley's Paris area? No. Um. There was. I didn't get any. Like, no one came up to me. I, Brian got roses. I'm a little flustered because you caught me off guard. <laughs> Because I what? Nice. <laughs> Matt he caught me off guard. guard. I was putting my deodorant on, and then he starts asking me questions. <laughs> you gotta smell good in these streets. So, um, Brian got plastic flowers. I didn't Some, get it. Somebody came well, up yeah, to me. Someone came up to him and gave them to him. It was so random. Just like, what did he I look hear- like? Was he cute? I, I can't make that determination. Yeah, so no. Yeah, you can. Um, if there's a good-looking guy, you can say it's a good-looking guy. Yeah, so yeah, he sure. wasn't because he's not saying anything. You'd smash? So, <laughs> smash or pass? I don't know. Smash or pass? Would you smash? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so he yeah, gave he roses up. to Brian. He just, to yeah, he just runs up and says, Luana. And I'm like, what? And he's like, I got these flowers for, for Melissa. And I was just like, I didn't see the podcast because I was off that day. And I'm just like, okay. He's like, yeah, I got them at the dollar store. Just go ahead and give them to her. I'm like, that do you have a wife cute. already? Okay. Hmm? Did he do you have a, a wife? Did he, did he have he a have ring a on? Yeah. I don't know. Was I talked to him for like two seconds. Ring? What? Was he wearing a wedding couple, ring? A couple questions. I, I, listen, I did not take all these details down. I got a couple I questions, though. It was break. He came up to me really quick, gave me them, and he was off. One, why did he not give you the roses himself? Two, why would he say he got them at the dollar store? Two very important questions. Okay, so I, I think that... I think because he said he, I got them at the dollar store like as a joke. It's like it was a like funny an, it thing. Be, yeah. It was a joke. Like, okay, here's a dollar. No one seriously... Like, everyone but, was asking me if I got mm-hmm. roses, but nobody got them. Somebody got them. Well, I think he might have given them to you, but he didn't know if he would have seen you. So he oh. saw me, and he's like, "Well, there's my chance." Or I might not see any of them. So he saw me, and he just ran up and said, "Here." Give also, these to like an opportunist, understanding yes. that he got it at the dollar store is a good thing because you start small, yeah, and you work your way up. Right. If he comes in like too hot, then where's he gonna go from? Well, there? also they're plastic roses, <laughs> so I think there's a big part of him that wants to, you know, include you in the meme. Yeah, it's Rather just a than, meme. It's not actually roses. No, it's right. that he just doesn't want them yeah. to ever die. Yeah, he no. wants you to remember <laughs> He forever. wants your love to last forever. Yeah. I just like a plastic Zed, rose. So. Just shout out to Zed. That was his name? I think it was Zed. All right. Wedding finger Zed. Zed? Thanks the for DJ? the <laughs> The DJ? Zed. Yeah. Zed trying to get them fingers yeah. wet. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. No. She did it. Yeah, but you know, you know, it's like only Zero she can weirder say it. When you Sky. say yeah. it, yeah. Oh, it's so much yeah. weirder. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely. Yeah. You just gotta embrace so, it, man. Embrace the weird. So anyway, no, it's it's. Uh, I'm trying to make it a running joke. It's no, it's, it's not. It's a hard one. It's a hard People are saying it and stuff. It is a running joke, but yeah. I, I just want to know where it came from. Like that <laughs> is a phrase. As somebody dipping who, your toe in. Listen, as somebody Ooh. who's constantly mixing up yeah. phrases i i can't imagine dipping your toe in yeah that's his phrase yes yeah, so i was just thinking of it <laughs> getting my fingers wet mm. <laughs> it's very logical the, no. the crazy part to me is that when i say it's getting your beak wet you're just like what the fuck does that mean no, I've, never I've never heard, heard that, that before i've heard it beak is beak? just mouth i'm sorry we're human beings we don't have beaks not the point. That's, That's birds. Not the point. It's not your point. So it doesn't birds get apply. their beak wet. You don't want to tell your human get your mouth wet. That's right, weird. Right. Yeah, you like, get your fingers wet instead. That's, uh, that's even we use weird. our fingers to pick the stuff idea, up out of the ocean. The use wet, wet fingers? We, you get the <laughs> wet when we're picking stuff out of the pond no, or no, ocean. No, no, no. The idea with getting your beak wet is like just a little taste. And, you know, you, you just want to <laughs> you want to wet your palate. And it's, yeah, well, how are we supposed to taste without our fingers? And it's get your feet wet because when you go to the ocean, your feet are the first things that get wet you have to use your fingers to pick up whatever you're it was tasting. almost it was it was kind of weird a couple of times when i first got Berkey, <laughs> and i used to buy his action he would be like 
You want to get your beak wet? Ew! <laughs> like, what? That's weird. It's not <laughs> like, weird. It's fine. It's he's fine. Like, he's, and then he'll buy my action. He's like, let me get my beak wet. No! <laughs> Beak. Oh, like, whoa, what is beaks need to get wet around here. Someone's got to wet the beaks. That right, first of all, so who's first, wetting the beaks? First of all, he's making it sound way more suggestive. <laughs> than, I don't speak that way. Like, no, no, what do you mean? No, you kind of do. In text, you're just reading. Let me get my beak wet. <laughs> yep. It was probably like, let me get a taste. That's that's, that's still weird. Me get no, a that's taste. common. To text him and be like, let it, me get a taste. It's yeah, common, let me get a taste. Like, just out of place. When you say when you say let me get a taste, it's clear that you want less than twenty. You want a sweat, yeah. Yeah, you want a little sweat equity. But saying let me get a yeah, sweat's okay. way different than let me get a taste. Let me get my Let beak me get a wet. taste as a derivative I mean, of let me get my beak suggestive. wet. It's very suggestive. Yeah. You just like your subject suggestive idioms. It's it okay. all comes back to food. No, it we're doesn't. It all comes back We're talking about food, sex. Not, not sex. <laughs> it all comes back to sex. Only you make it about sex. <laughs> Speaking of fucking... Whoa. Conrad, yeah, <laughs> ball. No out. one knew where that was going. <laughs> we're, we're all looking at each and other. We're all looking at each other like this. Oh no! That's what's he gonna next? say? We all that's have finger point. guns pointed at each other. Let's that's why I do this. That's that's why I'm good at what I do. Conrad's out in these streets. Let's get it popping. Trying to get it popping. Wants to be a millionaire. Maybe we'll started back today that with sixty bigs. Yeah, fifty-eight. Take. Yeah, was uh, chip leading for a small small window of time yesterday. Yeah. Decided what? to uh, draw the hardest table remaining. Yeah, literally, for sure. Yeah. Ilio Fox at his table uh, uh, is Fox. Aram. Part of uh, there are a couple other names I recognize. Thanks to me. Wait, part of what? Part of Elio's stack is thanks to me. Yeah, you uh, you really fueled the run up. I know. It's kind of what started it all, isn't it? You want to talk I about think it? So. My bluff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deviousness ensues. I honestly, the thing is, like, I don't have any regrets about that. I, I know. I was again. asking if you wanted to talk. About I would it. do it again. Okay. Maybe not for Sim. He's too good to <laughs> sniff it out. But anyone else is folding a seven there. Yeah. 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 They probably are. They, right. They definitely well, should. They probably don't even have a seven. They just don't even point. have a seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's true. He three got you with a seven five suited. So then, if it's anyone else, I'm bluffing into it. Right. Yeah. They, they just have top well, sacks. It kind of makes it better to though. Catch they have a boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to have a boat. So more of the story is don't bluff kids. Yeah, it's it a dangerous, dangerous game. Eight, five, six, kids. I'm they off the boats. stuff. Are you? You're off bluffing? <laughs> is this a personal statement to the... I'm off the stuff. No. Yes. If you play with me, I'm not bluffing. I have it. <laughs> That's what liars say. I'm off said. the stuff. I claimed that once. You did. He said to me, we had a whole 30 minute pep talk about how redlining early in tournaments is bad. Don't try to bluff it's it all bad. off. It's just... And then he gets to a spot and he goes, you know what? I have the nut blocker. Of course I'm going to be all in. <laughs> He's going to fold a straight. Yeah. I, so the backstory to this, uh, it was day 1B of the Millie Maker on my first bullet. I op or, uh, cut off opens, I flat button with king 9 offsuit, king of clubs. Don't give a fuck. Shut up. Shut up. I know it's not in range. Shut up. Wait, what did you Shut up. What did Shut you up. Have? I'd king nine off. Oh my Flatted. God. Shut up. I know. All right. I know. I get it. In the moment, Full you didn't cream. know. I did know, oh, but I knew. didn't care. Well, that's the you problem. That's the problem. That's it's a disrespectful call. It was, a, it, was, it was an aggressive call. Yeah. Very aggressive, aggressive call. call. Yeah. You did say he does a lot of calling. So. Yeah, he calls. Yeah. Go ahead, Bergen. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, I don't want to three bet this hand. It's a, it's a. Wait, that's a good hand to three bet. Nah, it's better than call. It's an easy nah. three bet fold. You, you got to take him to the streets, man. We're like infinite deep. <laughs> that is not tortoise approved. <laughs> the Nobody tortoise denies. That. Nobody knows what tortoise means. Yeah, it's not well, as big. I'm the tortoise. It's an inside check. Late tortoise and in the, the hair. The tortoise would not play that way. That's Slow right. and steady wins the race. Slow and Brian, steady wins Brian's the Brian's on that eight percent V pip from all positions. Hey. That's why, buying, uh, that, and that's why I'm buying his action. Than uh, yeah. I'm, I believe I'm 50% cash in this World Series so far. Strong. Yeah. yeah. Really strong. He why do you think I'm marker? buying him? He's able to play tighter than I am. Right. I can't do it. Yeah, 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 so you, you buy off, pieces I'm of mentally that, ill. Right, you can't just the sit there and wait for good hands. Yeah, I, I get it. You lay off the wrist. Happen. I mean, you, I'm playing... I'm playing with the rain, with the, with the charts say. That's all. No, no you're, you're not. not getting out there. No, you're not. What do you mean? You're playing with the rain. You guys have no idea. You got the pH charts. Ask me. Ask me. Ask. Give me a situation. I'll tell you whether I'm what I do. Under the gun opens. Button calls. You have thirty bigs in the big blind. You got ace deuce off. Okay, that's come on. I would shove threes. But you shouldn't do that. You should just call. Someone's gonna call you. Definitely just call. Yo, there was a whole article about Landon, bro. Yes. Yeah. He's big time now. Yep. 
No, they showered him. Jammed a hand that I thought it was a no, jam. No, they said fine. he was good. They said he might have been good. <laughs> no, they, they, said, <laughs> they always say he might be good. They said he was a good player with probably some edge. They said maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. We had, we had a nice discussion about it afterwards. The article was missing some pretty key How do we get the Fox solver? What's up? How do we get the Fox solver? <laughs> Just gotta ask uh, him. Like, it's, it's obviously funny to us, but uh, it, that's like the way that we used to do EV calcs back in the day. Um, and it's like, it's just stubbornness, honestly, at this point. Like, he's just got grown so accustomed to using this system where he has this full-fledged spreadsheet where you can enter ranges and spit back EV spots. But it's just like, bro, we don't need to do this. Like, Yeah, there's like, a, like actual yeah, there's, programs. There's, there's Hold'em Resource Calculator. Yeah. There's, well, there's also just like, yeah, I mean, even if you're just running for chips, like there's so many other good sources yeah. uh, and tools out there. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I thought the article was actually written. Uh, it was well written. But this is the Cards Chat article about the hand that Landon played in the 3K6 max where he had threes, caught off opens off third, and we have 30 and he just rips threes from the small point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought the point of the article was was uh, well intended. I, yeah. I do think that I there's agree. like a lot of this monkey see, monkey do, follow the leader type mentality yeah. uh, in this space where you just kind of find yourself following whatever the sims say. And it's important to acknowledge um, where sims are flawed or maybe more so... Um, that they're only as accurate as our level of assumptions. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, like, with that said, when you're playing live, there's a lot of room to deviate, and I think that that was the, the basis of the article. Like edge it, passing and... Yeah, like kind of just block. like, okay, uh, you know, in a, in a theoretical vacuum, this play is making money, obviously, even with ICM um, being considered. But, right. you know, maybe if you're in the 500 daily at the Orleans... Yeah. This isn't exactly the best spot to be yeah, trying like to pick up. Yeah, like having the chips to be able to play post-flop where you have more edge is going to be probably more profitable. Yeah, or even just, like, not jamming into spots where they're opening too tightly. Right, right? yeah, yeah. Well, there's always the counter-argument of the available post-flop edge of, like, effectively waiting for a better, like, a good hand and, like, getting money in versus completely overestimating the overfolds that happen pre. Yeah. Because if you're jamming 30 and people aren't calling correctly, the jam prints even more. Right, if someone opens too tight and then calls too tight, the jam is going to be a little bit more sketchy because you're jamming into a tighter range. Yeah, and so it's hard to account into like how much post flop edge you can have when you can just get a jam through a lot, pick up three and a half dead like bigs that are dead, and then move on with your yeah, life. Yeah, that's kind of interesting button. because Chris outlined that actually. Uh, so he gave too tight of a call off range. Yeah. Or cut off. Yeah. And uh, he calculated that like the jam was making 2.65 big blinds and then concluded there are bigger edges to pick up in the tournament. It's like, bro. If you're picking up 2.65 bigs in a hand, you're picking up 265 bigs per hundred. Yeah, of course. It's just like, Seems like a lot. no, yeah. no spot ever where you're making a whole big blind. No. Like you can never have that sort of edge yeah. and pass. Uh, but it also should have been a red flag to him that the calculation's off. Yeah. yeah. Because if because we already know that this hand mixes between calling and jamming, mm -hmm. and there's no way that calling can ever make two and a half big blinds. Yeah. Like, it's just literally impossible. You're yeah. You don't have aces. Right. Um, so it's like, that, that should be an immediate trigger that like, oh, I'm either thinking about this spot wrong or my calculations are incorrect. Yeah. Uh, and that's ultimately, you know, what I tried to highlight a little bit is uh, there were a lot of assumptions that I think live players tend to make that are logical fallacies mm. like i can pass on a plus ev spot because i have so much edge in the field yes. i'll pick up better spots yeah. later right. like i'm there's going to be a spot where i'm going to have a set and they're going to have an overpair and they're going to give me all their money or yeah I'm gonna have not an even just like something like that but just thinking that they can outplay like anybody like you right. see the that they fold you gain you red line somewhere else it's, yeah. it's not even about the specifics right it's about uh the vast majority of live players who aren't studied in the theoretical realm mm -hmm. don't think quantitatively. Mm -hmm. So whenever they say like, I'll pass up on this close spot now to pick up a, a big edge later, those are just qualitative terms that mean nothing. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that this spot that they're passing up on is making 24 big blinds on the aggregate of like per hundred, sure. right? They don't understand that in order for them to have that sort of edge in a spot where they're more comfortable, it requires them 
uh, being able to identify and quantify how they're producing right. <clears throat> that EV in those spots, like right? What is the better spot and what does that look like? Yeah, exactly. How so, does it come up? So what's really happening is a lot of copium yeah. where they're basically saying like, I'm not comfortable with a hand this week of risking my tournament life. Yeah. I'll be more comfortable in another situation where I either have a stronger starting hand right. or I flop a stronger post-flop hand right. and feel good about getting all the chips right. in. So basically like they're saying like, I feel more comfortable investing my tournament life right. when I'm more nutted. Exactly. Or polarized. Yep. It's like, well, we don't get to play that game. Yeah. And that's, well, that's like the classic live poker mentality is the, I can only get the money in with the good hands. And if you get cooler, you get cooler. And like, that's a respectful way to go out because in the group setting that I'm in, like we ran the ICM sim with the implications. We ran it in HRC beta. Uh, we could average stack for 30 bigs and it can run a sim for effectively having the average of 40 other stacks. And in the spot, it's a 70% jam, 30% call. So sometimes you can call, it's fine. Sometimes you can jam, that's okay too. But the issue can sometimes take into account of like, how much edge do you have in the field? And if you start node locking some stuff of, oh, he's only gonna call this plus, he's gonna start opening too wide or too loose, then the sim and the results change. So it's all very fragile. So it's tough to really know in like a baseline situation of like, okay, this hand makes sense for this. I can kind of, I can do what I want here, jam or call. And then some people have, an easier understanding of trying to find a better spot because jamming threes for 30 makes you look like an idiot. Like getting snapped and losing and being like, wow, I had 30 bigs. This didn't work out for me this time. And I ran this deep in a tournament where I could find a better spot where if I wait long enough, I can get a good hand and I can get Jackson versus ace queen and then flip and then maybe win or lose that and feel better about it. Yeah, but if you're I not do finding think... these other hands, <clears throat> you're not bluffing enough. I do, right. I think, well, that's true. But I do think that there's a lot of merit to, to the actual article uh, overarching point, yeah. which is that um, you don't need to have this fully balanced theoretical strategy whenever the field is incredibly soft. So yeah. basically, uh, you know, everything that you're saying is obviously correct in a theoretical vacuum. Right. But when you get into a practical real world application, yeah. you find yourself in a scenario where, um, sure, you may not be bluffing enough, but maybe you're in an environment where your opponent's ranges tend to be too tight or funneled towards the top. And they're the also not noticing if you're bluffing or not. Right, like, yeah, right. so like, they're, they're just paying, paying anyway. Attention. Of course. That's the part that I, that it's all, I think it's all, yeah, go on. We, we kind of forget is the audience that they're pitching this to. Right. Which is like, when Cards Chat is putting this out with Chris, uh, with Chris Wallace, uh, you know, writing it, it's because, you know, the average recreational player, the average you know, 1K or lower players reading it and they're trying to understand even why Landon would do it because they probably wouldn't rip. That's, but that's the problem that I had with it is because the implication was that, um, that when you're in this type of scenario that all of your hard work and study and uh, preparation allows you to navigate these small edge spots as well as possible and the the implication of the article was that the best way to navigate these spots is to pass right right and then to quote unquote find yourself in better spots or give yourself the opportunity to be in better spots later yeah but the reality behind that statement is that what you're saying is you just shouldn't really become skillful at the game and instead become reliant upon distribution and the deck yep right you're basically encouraging people to pass on risk in order to uh, hope for good fortune. Let's play, let's play devil's advocate. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what, so, what does the devil have to say? No, well, would you rip here in like a 500? No. I, I think that's what they were trying to say. Right, but my point is different. My point is that he does rip in this spot and would not rip in a 500 because he's right. that studied. He right. knows the spot intimately. Yeah. It, but that's my whole point. The article did not know the spot that intimately. The average audience member does not know the spot that intimately. Mm -hmm. So encouraging them to pass on what we ultimately conclude to be a plus EV spot is a very bad negative feedback loop. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the, old, it's the old adage of like, for you to exploit, you have to know where theory Correct. lies. Yeah. Correct, correct. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean. You can't, you can't encourage somebody to pass on the spot uh, because it's a $500 buy-in if they don't know that it's a spot to begin with. Correct. 
Yeah, of course. Them not yeah. knowing that it's a spot to begin with is the reason. It, it, it's it's a catch twenty two. It's the reason why they can't pass on the spot because if you knew the spot, you would be good enough right. Right. to like you know. And it's like right. this constant loop. Right. And I'm not trying to be overly critical, but I, I'm I'm basically saying that like I don't like the idea of offering passes in uh, spots where like we could just be a lot better as instructors or uh, dogs are about to go crazy. Okay. It's a dog day on the podcast. Uh, that's a that's a good signal that our special guest has arrived. Um, yeah. But yeah, to, to wrap this really quickly, I, I don't like the idea of saying that the audience is uh, the audience is beginner. Therefore, we should water it down and encourage. Like, we should encourage them to look deeper into the spot, not dismiss it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Encouraging them to look deeper into the spot. I think, you know, all these articles are, are you know, it's a tough spot because they're, they're made for, you know, the average consumer. They're not made. And, and there's, like, a limited amount of space. So, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. It's, it's lit in here, bro. All right. Melissa, <laughs> how are we doing? We have dogs now. It's on us now. Good. This is Scout, everybody. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy come here. Hey. All right. Well, who, who thought it was a good idea to bring Rudy is the loud, because unruly one. He's making us homeless. He's making. Rudy. Rudy. Rudy's the loud, unruly one who belongs to Melissa, which... How, how no, loud, Mike? unruly one. Un, unruly. Uh, did you call him ugly? Hi. <laughs> this is Rudy? Yeah. This is great. All right. And this is this is the content that people wanted to to watch. This is uh, now that the dogs have they they literally <laughs> welcomed Rampage to the podcast. That's like, true. They, like this he, was like the best intro that we've had so far. He he was gonna get the full uh, the full proper introduction, but instead he, can. he got three dogs Hello. accusing him of being an intruder. Trying to kick him out of the I'm house. Scamming them. That's, yeah. that's what's happening. Yeah. Scamming them. Rampage, yeah. welcome to the podcast. Hello. I wish Hi. you were on. Uh, hey, nice. Yeah, class welcome. Too. Cool. I, w I wish it were, were for better reasons. I mean, we'll get to better reasons, but let's be honest, we're here for the tea. What an entrance. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of tea that's going so on. So you got, you got scammed <laughs> by a Disney star? Uh, yeah, first moment of silence to uh, most or all of our net worths the past weekend. It's oh, been, yeah. It's been mm -hmm. a rough day. Yeah, mm. we're dead. Sweet, thank you. You're Perfect. Welcome. I'm here for you. Thank God I sold Thanks. that ape. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> that ape? You did. I had a mutant. Yeah. You did sell the I ape. Had a mutant. Yeah. Okay. Please don't sell the house. We, we, <laughs> we got uh, rid of it just in time. Fuck apes. How about that? With the scam, uh, there's a lot. There's there's a lot that happened. Uh, I met him yesterday. So first off, like I gave some guys a thousand dollars. That might be my phone. Mm. It might be Mike. It might be Mike. <laughs> We're gonna have to go through this all over again. <laughs> go ahead, continue. This is live. So this is live. Oh no! <laughs> oh, great, <laughs> wonderful. All right, go ahead. Hi. Okay, so <laughs> like for people who don't know, I gave some guy a thousand dollars because uh, just because I'm an idiot. Who is this guy? Some guy named Grayson. He's like a Disney actor. Okay. <laughs> or voice actor, I guess. Okay. Really red flags all over. If you look at my DMs, like he first messaged me because he wanted to sell me on uh, buying the verification, the little blue check mark. And then that was like his first DM for me ever. Right off the bat, that was like a red flag. He's like, no, I don't want anything to do with you. I'm all good. And then he like keeps coming back. We played COD once. I've met him a few times. Anyways, short story, long story short, like the only thing that really piqued my interest was that he told me he was playing in the game with Mr. Beast at, okay. at Caesars. I was like, oh, sick. Like, yeah. You play with Mr. Beast. Seems like a good connector, at least someone to talk to. Yeah, yeah. yeah Anyways, maybe every show time we a talk, preview of uh, that Poker Out Loud season you were on if you get the chance. Hmm? Maybe show Beast. Uh, <laughs> I'm really good. Yeah, that season of, of Poker Out Loud if you get the chance. I almost won. <laughs> you I did. almost won. I, I gave Landon you. a lot of money. I coolered you. Yeah. That, that was I had it. Cooler. Mm -hmm. wow. Hard Crazy. for you to have it. It's hard. <laughs> Poker is very hard. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're supposed to never have it, actually. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, anyways. 
Yeah, he says something about Mr. Beast. I'm like, okay, whatever. Every time we talk, he says he loses like $30,000 in blackjack, which is nice. also kind of a red flag, I yes. would think. Mm. Hits me up one day. He wants to play 125 PLO at Bally's and needs $1,000. I'm just like, okay, what's $1,000 to this guy? Whatever. Yeah. Moving on, I give it to him. Uh, and then I never hear back for a while. So I DM him and I post it on Twitter. And I guess everyone like cares a lot about this for some reason. Every single we love tweet a about good scandal. Every single tweet about this guy just gets like a bunch of impressions and mm -hmm. interactions on Twitter. So I've never had that before. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like yeah. the Tinder swindler. Yes. Yeah. He sends me a screenshot. Oh. He, he he responds to me on Telegram, huh. being like, uh, "I got mugged." Oh, his his enemies. enemies are after him. Yeah. Yeah. His enemies it seems mugged. like also, it because because we so <laughs> many people hit me up after like I got scammed by this guy too. This and oh. that. Like a bunch of he owes a bunch of people money. So he money, bought his check mark. Is that what happened? No, I think he's an actual person. Okay. He was he's a Disney voice actor. Wow, well, they, you, they you physically be, met him, right? I physically met him they like three need times. Need to pay him more okay. royalties or something. He's down bad. He's down. Well, really maybe the bad. blackjack is too expensive. Yeah, he's in Vegas a lot. That's probably an issue. Yeah. He's still in Vegas. So I bumped into him yesterday, and here's an update. Did he look beat up? No, he looked great. Okay, here's His the breath thing. smelled, but he looked <laughs> out of so, might... so there's that. His, like, uh, who punches someone in the middle of their forehead also? I don't know. <laughs> like, that he was, had, like, lipstick kind of on ridiculous. his forehead is what that was. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what, what all this is about. Everyone has their opinions. But uh, <laughs> update to the story Amazing. of what happened. I meet him. He, like, first of all, I'm going to the Venetian to play a $2,500 tournament. So I'm ready to just punt off $2,500. Mm -hmm. And I'm in my own world. I walk into the elevator to go downstairs. I lead the elevator and some guy just grabs me and it's him. And I was like, oh, I didn't oh even, God. we were on the same elevator. He grabbed you. you? Yeah, he grabbed me on the shoulder. Wow, like, he, could have just, he could have just walked right I by. I know, I didn't see him because I'm just wow. like oblivious to everything. He could have just walked right by he you. Could've. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ends up like just telling me he did get mugged, this and that. He's going into the casino with no money. He was just going to hang out at the sports betting area, the sports Wh book. What? I don't fuck. Okay, don't know, that's man. weird. Why yeah. would you do that? Anyways, yeah. just next, hanging out. Next hand. Yeah, moving, moving forward. He's with the buddy. Whatever. Mm. He says that he wants to make it right. He's going to send me like ETH or something when he gets home or something because <laughs> he has no access to a phone or whatever. So whatever. Oh. I just like don't really want to talk to this guy. Yeah. So I just brush him off and then and I'm going to go punt in my tournament. Yeah. After I punt my tournament, this friend that he was with as I'm leaving the room, comes up to me and pulls me aside and says, hey, tells, spills me some more tea, which is actually more important. Wow. Um, yeah. One, he wanted to clear his name from like being associated with him uh -huh. because he was like, I'm not his friend. And then two, he follows it up with, he also owes me money. Uh -huh. Three, he actually got mugged. Oh. What? And that was it. That was, that was kind he, of it. So he, maybe but, he did actually get mugged. Probably because he owes a bunch of people money. He owes yeah, his other. Yeah, he probably brain, got. Other so he probably didn't get mugged. He probably got roughed up. By yeah, someone. yeah, roughed up know. a little bit for some debts. Yeah, still got 12k taken back from him. I guess. Yeah. Like fully <laughs> sold. There's some valuable lessons here. First, uh, and I learned this right around the same. You're like 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Agreed. right around that age, I learned something incredibly valuable in this industry. It can be incredibly cheap to rid yourself of parasites. Mm -hmm. oftentimes there will be people on your outer circle that you don't want to be there, but just refuse to go away that will shame themselves out of your life forever for a small number. Mm -hmm. I have a handful of those debts four or 500 bucks here and there. That's owed to me yeah. from people who will literally never speak to me again Yep, because they are so horrified that they owe me this money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's nice. Unfortunately, this guy doesn't seem to be going away. He's still running the grift. Uh, and that YouTube video of people outing him for scamming was interesting, to say the least. Yeah. You watched it? I watched, I, I like brushed it? through it, yeah. Yeah, apparently he has a lawsuit with them too. That's what he Yeah, that stuff just doesn't matter. Like, it, really it's know. so impossible to collect on. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw the... I didn't actually, how did he get, how did he scam those people? I I don't. I didn't. I didn't pay attention to oh, the details. Okay. Yeah. I, I just did. wanted to know like what the number was and uh, what was the number. It, it's relatively small. Oh. Um, and then uh, I don't know if you saw like uh, a game runner in LA is like suing Paul Pierce mm -hmm. for like oh debts and stuff like that. Like this yeah. stuff just never. It, it either settles yeah. out of court or it goes away. Yeah. Right? Um, which is pretty unfortunate. Well, because they, there's story. no uh, written like contract or anything, right? Like there's. There's nothing for them to like really go off of. Right. 
yeah so it's, it's, it's to, a lot of he said she said yeah. and then also it's just like you're coming from the vantage point of like so i run this illegal game <laughs> in my penthouse <laughs> <laughs> that is not okay right. you might have seen a video of it paul actually got fired from espn from it right. uh and what had happened was I had lent him some money. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. He lost said money to the working girls and the patrons of this illegal game. And I would like him to pay. So did you give him cash or chips? He was like, no, I just wrote it down on a piece of paper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul Pierce says, I'm Paul Pierce. What do I need his money for? I didn't get any money from him. Right. And then where do you go Look, from there? Here's the paper. Right. <laughs> They're like, that's not it. <laughs> you wrote this five minutes ago. <laughs> I think, uh, I think the other big takeaway from this is that this, it's good that you want, I like, I like that you were very proactive in going public with this a, because it's an amount of money that's not going to change your life. But right. B it really does like announce to the world that uh you you don't want to deal with this stuff in the future yeah right because like a million different people are going to run this scam on you you're a public figure you're on youtube you're getting a lot of clicks uh and if social clout is the only thing is the only barrier stopping you from giving someone money <laughs> people will find ways to to accredit themselves you know? yeah so i had this exact situation happened to me i played at parks like a 1500 main event my one of my first ones ran deep with uh i mean I, names are not important but ran deep with someone really nice uh really nice guy ends up like asking me for i think it was like 3k uh told me he would play, pay me like the next day uh at, at the game and then he ends up saying like oh i got beat up like whatever he's like oh like i'll pay you and he had like a like a karaoke place, like like that that he ran, whatever. Like he wasn't a professional. Ends up like obviously ghosting me. Like people are telling me, like, oh, like ask for the police report. Obviously there wasn't one. Um, but then like five years later, he's like, I saw you on YouTube. And like he just like randomly hit like one of his friends saw me on YouTube, tells tells him that he saw me on YouTube. The guy sees me in a tournament, gets my number, gives it to him, and the guy pays me back. Wow. Oh, oh, you got yeah. the money back. Yeah, oh, he how literally you... paid me back. It was like you're insane. Crazy. You're the only one that gets the money back <laughs> yeah, in this spot. Yeah. <laughs> That's some real dark side shit. Literally, yeah. literally <laughs> was like, his friend, his friend asked for my number so he could give it to him. He texts me, says, hey, remember this situation? I was like, yeah, of course. He's like, oh, how can I pay you? And I was and like, it's what, did you guys just both forget for like five No, years? I never forgot, but like I knew never it wasn't. Forgot. Never, never forgot. forgot. No, you would never forget, but wasn't this guy. I knew it wasn't coming. I mean, he was probably just in like a down bad spot and then just yeah. like, you know, um, took advantage of the situation and then made it right. I mean, that shout off. out to him you, for you making it, it right. Off a while ago. Oh, it was sure. super written yeah. off. It was it's super written off. It's pretty wild, actually. Like, so it was like a free It was a free roll. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a free That's roll. Nice. It, was, it, happened, awesome. it was years later? Yeah, five, like five wow. years later. That's, wild. That's really nice. You just get like 3K that you weren't expecting. It happened to me recently. It literally happened to me like a couple weeks ago where there was a situation that happened. Um, Someone got some coaching, I gave him some coaching, but effectively his account got hacked and like wanted to get a refund on hours. And I was like, sure, no problem. Like you can have um, a refund for like X amount of hours that he didn't want to have for coaching. And then his account was actually hacked by somebody else. So I sent the hacked account money and then he was like, yo, I never got the money. Wow. And I said, okay, like no problem. Like, I guess it's, it's on me that I fucked up and gave it to the wrong account. Like, I just want this to go away. Like, $1,200 isn't going to change my life. Like, right. sure, you got it. That was one hour? Uh, no. <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh, anyways, uh, a couple months go by, and like, I'm just, whatever, like, this happened. This is what it is. It's over. I get a message from him saying, hey, my account got hacked. It's definitely not your fault, and I want to make this right. So if you can send me an address, and I can get that back to you. And I go, yeah, great, thanks. So I just kind of got money back that I never thought I was going to get yeah. just by, like, kind of paying twice because, like, mm -hmm. the hacker obviously got, his, got the hacked money, but... I'm getting a refund on the money that I gave back to him. So there's hope. But sometimes there's hope. I wouldn't expect it in this situation, mm -hmm. but who knows? He said to my face he would give it to me. So I, I mean, he's going to. People do, right? Yeah, I, like, I think his racket is, is like, <laughs> his racket is so uh, like carbon copied by people mm -hmm. who like run this sort of grift. Uh, what are you saying, grift? What, what is like grifters? People oh, who grifters. are just like, like scammers, chiselers. Yeah, they're like it's a new the, word. It's, new it's a scam. Word. Scammers. Uh, I don't want to call them scam artists because like it's so bad. Because they're not artists. They, it's yeah, like they're using another sentence. Well, it's weird that he has like a following. 
Does he though? I don't know. They might be fake. They might be yeah. fake. You can buy followers and it's Instagram. so it's so difficult to tell now because it's like uh we don't know when people got their check marks at one point yeah. it was a lot easier yeah like he might have just gotten it whenever he did the voice acting yeah um you can also like buy accounts that are already check marked and then just like change it i just yeah. got oh, a no deal way. from that yeah, yeah. so yeah. did i just, like, yeah. interesting did they just say hello because a lot of yeah. crypto i have an offer um, for you a lot of crypto like rugs were doing that yeah, yeah it's sharp um, sharp. Sharp. It is. It I is, mean, yeah. if you're gonna rug, like they, they would pretend to be like a crypto. Those are scam term. artists, right? Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's artistry the, that's right where the there. Art comes in, right? Yeah. Uh, the other the people ruggers are making this, yeah. so much. I mean, the rugging industry and crypto <laughs> <The industry laughs> must be <laughs> thriving. So, so there's clearly scam artists and scam apprentices, and this guy's a scam apprentice, and not best. an artist yeah. at best. But yeah. but it's like you know, it, it's a it's a very common uh, racket that he's running. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember. Must have been like a month and a half ago or so. Uh, I was playing live at the bike, and this young kid, Alex, was was in the game. He's like 21 or 22. He was in ROTC. I guess he had signed a contract to go into the army or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Uh, and we're playing, you know, 100, 200, like pretty big stakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know anything about him. I had just heard that he had been playing in Bobby's room the week prior. So I kind of asked around because it's like if you're 21 or 22 playing those stakes, people know who you are. One of two things is true. You're either incredibly good and talented at poker and have made a lot of money already, like probably online, mm -hmm. or you come from wealth. Yeah. And as best I could tell, neither was true of this kid. He was very clearly not that good and very clearly like didn't come from massive affluence. Like, uh, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second, but... Apparently, like a week prior, he'd been playing in Bobby's room. He had a big run where I guess he won like 100K one night or whatever the case may be uh, mm -hmm. and ended up getting a seat in this live at the bike game. He shows up with less than the minimum buy-in. Red flag number one. Yeah. Right? It's like you were just playing with six figures in front of you. I so know. like what I assume happened, and I don't know this to be true, but like best guess makes sense, is that he befriended somebody with money who free rolled him in that game, maybe like 20%, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, he just treated it like what it was, a, a, a six-figure free roll. I heard that like, he, like from him, he said that he had been up for like days straight, no sleep, was like half drunk throughout oh the game, God. ended up just having a big score, right? Didn't ever play the game again, though. Comes to LA, minimum buy is 20K, he is 15. And I'm like looking like, what? What the hell is going on here? Like, yeah, yeah. They, okay, so this already is not adding up. Then I find out that he borrowed 10K uh, from like a mutual friend. And uh, the mutual friend told me, and I'm just like, you're never going to see that money. He's like, no, no, no. Like, he's for sure good with it. I was playing with him in Bobby's room. He had like 100,000 in front of him. Uh, he was telling me a story about how he was playing like high stakes Baccarat and uh, Baccarat. Th this, this Baccarat. rapper came, <laughs> this rapper came and like hung out with him all night. And then they went out to the strip club and all this other stuff. It's like, he's flashy as all this cat. I'm like, this is the biggest facade yeah. ever. Because if any of that were true, he wouldn't be waiting on a fucking wire right, right. to play 100, 200. Also, at if somebody was playing high stakes Baccarat, I would be like, Baccarat. They, they don't no, have no it. one gets They're their money back in <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to hear that somebody was like in the pits all night. Right. Like, well, he like told a story where uh, it, was, it was either like high stakes Baccarat or high stakes blackjack. It might have been blackjack. Uh -huh. But I think it was blackjack because he right? said he was betting like 1500 a hand. It's like, okay, yeah, that's not. 50 a hand yeah but it's also but it's not, not 5k like, a hand. yeah that's not like something to brag about yeah it's just like okay like yeah you're gambling but yeah. like you know you're you're not rocketing it you're off like you might have a, yeah. rocketing it yeah you might have like a plus or minus 10 or 15k <laughs> night like don't get me wrong that's a lot it's in, a in lot the pits but like it's yeah. not what we're accustomed to yeah hearing. like if you're hearing of like this guy really rockets it but he's playing like 30k a hand or something crazy yeah like, something significant where yeah. it's like okay this is gonna move the needle so Remember like papa Remember Papa oh, yeah, from yeah. the win? Yeah. Papa was playing, was it like 100K a hand? I don't know. It was oh a huge number. There's, a, there's a whole backstory to that guy. We did, we need a whole nother Papa. I know. For, for I saw, sure. I won't yeah, say for who, sure. Papa was a legend, man. I saw somebody doing Baccarat, and you all know who it is, but I won't say it. And, and they were 
playing with cranberries, so just flicking in a cranberry every time. And I'm sitting there like, it was my first time in Vegas. I was like, what is happening? Right. Like, is I don't real? even have like 1K in my bank account. Like, right. what's happening right now? Papa, Papa for like two, three weeks was... My heart. Like, so the every, shirt, like every pro uh, in town. Like the short synopsis of this Papa world. guy is uh, that... Bellagio? That's yeah. how what? Sorry, he was asking no, what a cranberry is. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> Twenty five. Oh, that's so art. adorable. What the fuck? <laughs> that's so adorable. It was that Aria. I'm down this bad. You're yeah. not down bad. You're okay, I've never, I've never actually <laughs> had hey, a cranberry of my own. Ask your friend Mariano. He'll tell you what it is. You, he should, that's fucked up. Right <laughs> I saw him yesterday at the crepery. They've been grinding. <laughs> Rampage and Mariano. They, I see them at Resorts World. Yeah. Those are good games. Yeah. You Could were playing with Muha. I hear hop in the mix. I, I, I told Oh, you, you got to meet the, the infamous Muha. Yeah, he, 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 I've he, already played with them. He was oh. getting. <laughs> he was getting. <laughs> Muha, he's uh, like so hard. Every time. That guy so just so a he was, I turn around and he's like, there's a table behind us and I. He's he's just pointing at him and Muha <laughs> haing so hard. Did he, rank, did he rank you yet? Oh, yeah. 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 What, 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 what score did you ranking? get? He, he, he ranks me as the second best player at the table. Right? Uh, next to him, wow. right? Next to him. Yeah, oh, that's wow. pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. That's, that's a good compliment bad. from I'm Muha. I'm better than him by like at least three points. It's oh, wow. no, that's bad. He didn't, that's give, bad. You, uh, yeah. he didn't give you a number from one to ten. He just said second seven. best. You're seven? seven? Oh, good. okay. Yeah. Mariano's like a five. Oh, wow. Ouch. I've been there before. Yeah. What What's your number? I, I've I've ranged from one to nine. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on the day. But, uh, it really amazing. depends on how drunk he is. Really, the game I didn't know this guy's just like a legend and, and super legend. Neither did oh, I? Yeah. And I'm, yeah, so, he's ushering in the new generation right. of uh, live pros. So Dude, like congrats. Berkey used to play used to play the trash talk game. With trash him. talk Tuesday. Yep. So yeah, that was like forever ago, and now I play the Resorts World game with a ago. lot of the same characters that yep. Berkey used to play that game with. It's wow. it's insane. We, it, it's we, like watching a fossilized version of. Uh, Think about it. We games. played with Muhaha Just like when Ethan was like 10. Dude, Ethan maybe younger. Maybe school. younger, yeah. This wow. is why. I, I started around. playing with him 14 years ago. Yeah. You're, yeah, well, you're there 10. You're 10. Yeah. How are you guys still in poker? Get out. <laughs> Get the fuck out. I feel, <laughs> one week in the WSOP and I'm out. <laughs> you, yeah. you know the you know the podcast with uh, Lappin and uh, O'Kearney, the yeah, locked yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Where, where they're just like they're behind bars. That's, they that's look how like I feel. Like 80 years old. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel with poker. In. I'm just like locked in. Hey, my but hands you might on the get it. Like maybe you'll get a GPI for a podcast this year. You think yeah. that I give a fuck? <laughs> You're also on the Council I'm of OGs. Saying. I take it back. Lens. I really want the award. <laughs> I want the award too, man. Yes. Huh? I want it too. You know what? Yeah, you I, care I so little. You, you just have it displayed right behind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't care about this <laughs> at all. You know, you know what, the, <laughs> what the real award is? Getting to come here every day and talk to my friends. Oh, that's, right. Right. Oh, that's the, weird, that's the that's real so award. Nice. Oh. I love you, Matt. <laughs> Thank Meanwhile, you for being my friend. Is, Shut up, you big bald dumb idiot! <laughs> That's how you say. Yesterday, Berkey was me. picking us up, and Landon's just like, "Love you." <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to throw him off guard. It worked. It worked like out. It. it makes me magnificently. Uh, so you have some other things going on outside of getting scammed. You, uh, you just signed with Above the Felt. With Tom, yeah, congrats. Nice. Figured, Welcome like, to the club. I keep, I keep seeing all these things from YouTube. It's like, what is going on here? I gotta figure this out. You know what it really you is? Know, it's it's not that it's even like that big of an opportunity. It's more so that you'll just never have to discuss terms with anyone ever yeah. again. Yeah, and I'm that's really all that matters. That. Yeah, oh, me like, too. You and me both, buddy. I gave somebody nine bigs for a hundred. I know. <laughs> well, I think that like I don't know. Is it a young person thing? Yourself, but I'm just like I'll take the worst deal ever like, we don't I'll, know how much we're worth yeah no, no i don't and, I, and i'm like oh, you want to pay me yeah. to do anything yeah. like okay and right. then I, realize... I think it's also just like uh <coughs> i think it's a scarcity mindset too yeah like growing up the way that i grew up if somebody offers me what i deem to be a stupid amount of money yeah and this doesn't have to be a large sum either right, right. like if somebody offers me 1k to do something that's going to take me an hour yeah that to me is a stupid amount of money yeah right and it's, it's like the scarcity mindset kicks in and you just say like, you just have to say yes to everything. Right. But then you start saying yes to every one hour opportunity. And it's just like, I'm working like 600 hours. No, yeah. And then you've realized Damn, that's 600 it's also the No, but you're not getting 1K obviously every time. It's also 600,000. Also- when you look at it in like, oh, this is like one hour of my time, but it's like the amount of hours that you put in for the expertise for you to deliver that one hour 
also the prep. Is, is it, and, yeah, 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 yeah. It ends up being like ten hours of work for right. a, a one hour game. Twenty twenty years, twenty five years, thirty the, years, maybe forty years. You play like poker. how much money they have. <laughs> like they have a lot of budget to pay yeah. you. Yeah, like they're gonna offer you the infinite minimum amount of money. Yeah. Like yeah. Actual infinite. Yeah. Wait, did you add? Did you ask what companies? No, it's the government companies. That have <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean, we did. Christian and I did a a, a presentation um, during AWS Week out here, which is a major conference uh, for Amazon. Amazon Web um, Services. And uh, we got hired by one of the corporations where they were putting on a big dinner for their consumers and for uh, their partners, and they were going to hire a magician for like <laughs> entertainment. And they're just like, well, everybody's really into strategy and poker. Like, these are really sharp people. They deal in tech. Uh, they just want to, like, learn and understand more about poker. So we did a 45-minute presentation on edge gambling. And uh, I remember we were trying to price it. This was before I was working with Tom. And I was, like, asking people their advice on what numbers I should ask for. And in my head, I was, like, in the 2 to 3K mark. Mm -hmm. And nobody, and I mean no one, told me to ask for less than 12K. What? <laughs> like, I found out later they were going to pay like 8K for a fucking magician. What? You know what that's called? That's the value of friendship. Your friends yeah. tell you how much you're worth. That's oh, the they value of us. Amazon. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. They also got money too. Yeah. Don't worry. They have a big budget. And like to you, it seems like a lot. To them, it's like a drop in the bucket. Super we, drop we, got, the we got somewhere like close to 15K. And don't get me wrong. Like, I put, a, I put a lot of work into it. But uh, even after the fact, like the, the grumblings were we... we like lowballed like they probably had a 20 to 25k yeah budget. yeah so it's hard like i don't know i've never worked uh in like a corporate thing where they're doing this so i don't know what budgets usually yeah. are and i also like don't know what the market value of like how easy is it to find someone like me versus like like what is like the market value of like you know so i have no idea so i'll just be like wow you want to pay me to do anything okay <laughs> i say this with absolute <laughs> sincerity there's definitely nobody else like you Aww. <laughs> Wow. You're right. Man, the internet just blew up. I already saw a <laughs> I'm tweet. I'm not wrong either. I literally already saw a tweet that was a screenshot of the opening of Melissa belly laughing and Landon like looking at her adoringly. <laughs> and the tweet just says, I look at everybody he adoringly. Everyone like that. Though. The yeah. tweet just really says, does. I don't know, it's something about these two. I'm a non threatening <laughs> really individual, does. you know? He I just say how I feel. You just like love people, I, I think. Too, too much. Yeah. yeah, too much. He's yeah. Lenny. Aww. He's Lenny and Bro, we're all Bro, why are you gonna turn Aww. everything into a roast? He's no. Lenny and we're all his because rabbits. That's, that's so, how he, that's that's how so... he shows his love. Like, whenever he's roasting you, it's like in a moment where, like, he wants to tell you I how don't much appreciate you love Let's not fucking do this. All right, Rampage, <laughs> you've, been, you've been grinding. So, you have a ring. You have a bracelet. How's your summer you, going? He's got, he has rings. multiple rings, man. Oh, all right. My yeah. bad. Yo. I don't have any of these do things. Do your goddamn yeah, research. Put some respect on Rampage's name. I have three. One was for a whopping less than how much you got for the Amazon service. <laughs> okay. I won one in Aruba for Yeah, 8, but you're 500. married to the game now. Hmm? You're married to the game now. You married, got a ring. I'm married to the pain. Hmm. Yeah. That's Tournaments. Yeah. Just, just are, are you a full-blown tournament player now? I'm trying to be. I'm just like a full-blown Misreg, it feels like now. <laughs> I'm shit I want, you're I shit reg. You're shit reg and Misreg. You're not old enough, enough to be shit tweet. or me. Yeah. I want to tilt tweet. Like It was funny yesterday. I was watching your your stories. You're like... I finally busted, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you just get That's me like, out of so, here. You know honestly, I mean? it's no relatable, though. It's, it's when like, you're yeah. short stacking and your car dead and you're just like, get me the fuck out of here. If you're going to do it, just fucking end it now. <laughs> like, the funny part is the second you bust, you don't feel relief. You feel sadness. Yeah, yeah so like, then let's talk about you don't really want to leave. There's, two, there's like two different camps of this when you have 10 big blinds. One camp is the, wow, 10 big blinds is a fucking lot. <laughs> and the second camp is... I can't be here anymore. Yeah. Just, I'm putting it that's, all in dark. That's, that's a cash player because I'm I would like dark. to be 200 bigs deep exactly. at, yeah. at all times. I used sure. to think that way. I don't want to be eight. I don't want to have eight bigs and have to fold <laughs> I, seven, eight seven suited. Like, I, I don't want to do that. You got six bigs in the cutoff and it's a and it's a fold with jack seven suited. It's like, I don't want to live in this world anymore. I, like, that's a good hand and I'm in the cutoff. Right. And the, there's a big blind ante. And I've not seen anything other than 10 six off for the past to two be, hours. To be fair, the machine it no jammed feelings. like 10%. It yeah. did. I, I found you mixed yeah. it. You I, I roll, I low, I randomized. High it. frequency, yeah. low frequency play. Deal. How, how'd, you, how'd you feel yesterday? You walk into Venetia and they like harass you about the cameras or whatever. Oh, that's every time I walk into it. I mean, they don't <laughs> harass me. The floor just doing their job. Yeah. Like, you can't film. Like, uh, what's the point of being here? They said that they're working on something to mm. like 
working with their legal team. I mean, to it's help yeah, of course. Why would they not want you? To it's do good marketing. Like, yeah, yeah, everyone. Yeah, of course, everyone knows like the pros of it. It's just yeah. it's literally free marketing for Venetians. Why? Okay, yeah. so What's the why? Cons? Yeah, why is there this stipulation in the first place of no recording? Do we just know? Venetian. I don't know. Yeah, like, everyone else is chill with it. It's just Venetians Venetian. always been like. So super you could probably had like these rules else? in place like way before there were vloggers and way before right. like, all the oh, stuff. Oh, sure, that's then, for sure. Right, yeah, and then the, well, the, suppose, what I, it takes to get them changed is like it has to. Go the thing is, is that the the, it's 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 uh it's just about enforcement. Every every casino has this rule. Right. Aria oh. is like really strict about it, oh, but really? then doesn't necessarily enforce all that hard, or at least more recently, I guess they haven't. Uh, but in the past, they've been like, like Sean has had a hard stance of if you want to film, come to me. We'll set up uh, a, a sign that says filming in progress, letting everybody at the table know that there might be, a, you know, it's a lot of red tape to cut through, right? The win used to be very, like when we were vlogging back in 2017, the win was impossible mm. to get shots. I tried to get B-roll, like walking through the shops and a wow. guard like, you. like tracked me down. Uh, so, I mean, like, yeah, as we get into the digital or further into the digital age, I think that these restrictions will loosen up a little bit, but, um, I think right now it's kind of just like, they're a bit antiquated, the rules, like now it's like so common for people to want to film their sessions yeah. and vlog it. Everyone's but, filming their all ends at Bally's. Yeah. Like every single yeah. Every, yeah. 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 Correct. Everyone they just that, can't, like, they really can't police that. Yeah. You know, What's the easiest place to film at? Like you've had so far? I've had. That's why I go to Resorts World a lot. Yeah. They're like very the floor there is the it. best. The yeah. dealers are amazing. I, I like Resorts World yeah. a ton. They might be my yeah. favorite place. They like yeah. you. It's my favorite place. I want to just go sure. to like, I want to play like the, the nightly. The $160 yeah. nightly. Yeah. Just, like, it. You should do it. The wow. nightly gets lit sometimes. You should all just go. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. all want to yeah. go play the nightly sometimes? Don't, don't wow. whip us all into I this. No. They're yeah. so young. Yeah, we used to do that. That's so okay. They're so, you're I'm, I'm not making fun of you. I'm not making fun of you. You're I'm before you're here and I'm all yeah, for it. We, 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 we yeah, but you're washed. Like you're <laughs> <laughs> He's not washed. Well, He's you're the goddamn on the other tortoise. You're on the other side that's of the true, bell curve. That's true. I, I play poker for fun now. You guys are all miserable. Yeah, the, the, cool, bell curve, the bell curve is Sounds very like young and hopeful and optimistic, and it's very fun. Implied and then you get to the peak, and you're max miz, and then you're washed on the other side. It's fun That's where you want to be. It's nice. Yeah, no, that's my goal. I would like... my. I'm a inspiring like giga whale yeah i would I get like it. to be super rich because but, once henry and i went to play one three in barcelona and we were like the whales we had just finished like a 12 hour stream we like showed up we just wanted to like splash around and like we they were being so nice to us yeah. like the the you know the one three regs at, at barcelona I, 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 listen and we're like wow this is what it's like to be a whale like these are the stakes that we can afford to whale at <laughs> right but like imagine being a whale at the higher stakes it's so nice. Everyone's so nice to you. They're like, whatever you want. You want to run it twice. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I remember this this phase, and I don't yearn for it. Yep. Uh, I don't. I don't feel any better being the old jaded grizzled man either. But like the idea of going to play a nightly for fun. But you're with your friends. Or for any reason. For we, used to, we used to do it. It's fun. Like you're with friends. Like it's, wouldn't you love to come? How about the we'll meetup? We have to ask game? to be Did on the same fun? table though. No. That needs to. Oh come on! You're supposed to say yes. It's different. 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 different group that come down to the George <laughs> Roll and play the 165. We'll just start our own tournament. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, the I would love to start our own tournament. We should start a heads up tournament. No, I don't want to play heads up. I'm not good at it. Relax. We we've done this before. I'll be happy to run it back again. Yeah, it's a great tournament. Um, it's just expensive. It's a lot of. Like, I don't know. The meetup game between you two mm -hmm. sounded fun. Yeah, we did it. We did uh, a heads-up challenge two years in a row, um, and then COVID hit and it just died. But we should do a heads-up challenge, but Lana's the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there's like a scale, like it's the scale of Miz, and it's a linear graph of age and miserability, right? Oh, so the yeah. older you get, the more miserable you are. See, the nightly sounds fun to us because we're with our friends, we have yeah, fun, you know, low time. on the Miz scale. High on the Miz scale is, I don't want to fucking play poker at all anymore. Let me find something else to do. I'm definitely not going to play a nightly. And that's what you are. But, you no, know what? We're, we're right at the cross section of every single second that I spend playing poker, I want to earn the absolute maximum amount of dollars. You're Max Miz. No. Oh, he's Max EV. Just yeah, win Max. the tournament, and then you, you Yeah, win just the win, the nightly. win the nightly. Wait, I, want, I want an MSPT. Ethan won an MSPT. Where's your MSPT? I don't play MSPTs, okay? Ah. Leave me alone. Mm. I don't, I don't you know play why I'm a cash game player. It's because you've been playing tournaments, and you are a cash game player. He doesn't know. Yeah. That. 
when he won. Right. He doesn't like, know that when he won the MSPT. Cash players are Miz when the they MSPT play <laughs> tournaments mostly. Yeah. It's it could be less Miz if you didn't just reg like bullet, like level one or two of these. Like, be less you Miz. think I'm on time? That's adorable. He's Barely gets here on, on time. Still. I don't even think I made it on time to the 25k. You haven't made it on time to the podcast. <laughs> Based. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, I, I just. It's not that poker's not fun to me. It's playing with friends is not fun to me. I, like, I, I feel is, that. Wait poker a minute. No, 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 no. Very no. competitive. You bet 3x pot in the river to meet up game, and you laughed your ass off when I called <laughs> you with a jack. You had a fucking blast. Don't you, fucking dare. Don't no, you putting, dare. Putting you in pain <laughs> is... You're right. I did have a good time at the yeah, game. Yeah, I, I know forgot. you did. This it guy just says like stuff. It. He just lies to you. No, he lied to you. Is, bro. He used to be the same with me. Now he just moved on to you. <laughs> But he's lying. Eventually, he's you'll he's have money fun. and he'll move on to somebody else. And then Landon will do it to me. It'll yeah, like, it's no, just, it's not. It has nothing to do with money. It's the I hate playing with friends. It has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with self-awareness. Eventually, you became self-aware. <laughs> he's not yet, and it's fun to check him once in a while. Yeah, that's fun. What's fun? 3x potting river and watching you, you call spiked the trips. Congratulations. <laughs> you live a you start life. thinking like he's he hates me. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think that at all. He just wants to own me. I'm gonna call with a jack. You call with a jack. Were you good? That wasn't good. He rivers, yeah, the he rivers trips. I, I know. He rivered a straight against me one time. Huh? Same thing. <laughs> oh, that's right. I did. I did. did you slow roll him? Oh, this is what everybody knew. He was yeah. Oh, I slow rolled him so tough. No, you didn't. I did. I knew what was going on. You were on. the only one who did. I slow rolled him so badly, Ethan, that the dealer looked at me. He goes, in my 15 years of dealing, <laughs> I Ethan. have never seen it. I'm going to tell people that story if it's okay with you. <laughs> Ethan, Ethan. <laughs> Matt, landed. I looked at the entire table. Matt asked me to flip my hand. As soon as he asked me to flip my hand and saw it like a 10 paired on the turn, and I knew he had a good hand at that point, he goes, oh, that's a bad card for me. I knew you're fucking lying. 100% <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just dead here. But you, but you kept paying. <laughs> Floor is lava. It was all in a fluff. You spiked it. No. What meetup game is this? No. Oh, that was a different one. Oh, yeah. Uh, we did a meetup game. MGM meetup game. Uh, whenever, whenever... Uh, it's comedy night with Stapes. Yeah, it was the comedy night uh, when Stapes reopened the, oh, okay. the space. A couple weeks I ago. just saw the bat. Did you go hit balls? Yeah, oh, yesterday... Uh, man, what a nightmare this all turned out to be. But uh, I went with Brad and Haley uh, hmm. to hit softball. And... So much was brought to light that I was unaware of whenever uh, this bet was like being discussed. So the initial bet was uh, Brad Owen said he could hit a home run in 50 swings off of Haley. Mm -hmm. um, and what I extrapolated out from that was Haley was a D1 college pitcher. They were going to be playing on a slow pitch field, which is 300 feet, and that Brad was drawing dead. The reality is... Uh, they're playing on an actual softball field, which is 200 feet. Haley uh, basically still has all of her eligibility. She did go to a D1 school, but she uh, basically quit after her freshman year. So she really hasn't pitched competitively in like 10 years. Uh, although I think she said she threw in a tournament last year. Anyway, needless to say, she's rusty, right? So when we got there, uh, like I still played think... two years of Little League and he was really good at it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's I, I still think he is... <laughs> probably it's probably a fair bet for the home run uh at even money 50 is a lot, a lot that's why i think it's a fair bet it's 50 swings right it's not 50 it's 50, strikes. it's 50 swings but um like once she gets into condition it's going to be hard for him to make really solid contact but it's only 200 feet so it doesn't take like you don't have to sit in and really like lock and load and you know yeah drop your hands and rip one he just kind of has to like find a way to get under a ball and pop way. it up. Find a way. Uh, so I think like even money, you know, it's basically saying that like he's two percent to hit uh, home how run. How did you and him look? I hit one three hundred fifty feet on the fourth pitch. Nice, Sick flex. But it. like she was kind of she was kind There's of throwing BP fastballs. I heard that there was video. No, no video. No video. Um, it didn't happen. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, I, I I wanted to like bring the bet higher and basically say that he couldn't make contact. Because I've seen this bet run a bunch in college. Like, our college pitchers would face our hitters. And this is D2 caliber. And uh, the, the hitters would look stupid. Because, you know, they're calling balls and strikes. And the girls are throwing four different pitches on four different planes. They're throwing up, down, in, out. And they're throwing uh, screwball sliders, change-ups, rise balls, 
okay. and then yeah, normal so she fastball. was just trying to like just get back into form. Yeah, she basically yeah. was just like peppering us fastballs. Um, what if she was like sandbagging? She definitely wasn't sandbagging. She's gonna need some time to train up. Uh, I think like fully trained up, it would be interesting. But Brad, I, I basically bought out on the contact bet, and we said that like we might try to run it back. Oh, there was getting, a bet. Uh, yeah, I bet him two k that he couldn't put one in con or in, in play, which was just a bad bet. Um, Listen, but I man, think it's, it's okay. an okay. We all, so we, we, we might run the bet back uh, with him facing a current like like find somebody on the ULV UNLV team like get their pitcher and have him face her. And now I think it's like a much closer bet. I wonder how you pitch this to the softball. Hey, uh, we're just like professional gamblers and we're, <laughs> we're just bet. degenerate. Hopefully you can we can't it. pay you <laughs> per se. We but... can't just do things for fun. We always have to put money on right. it. Well, so. Like we can't pay yeah. you because you're a collegiate <laughs> athlete per se, but there might be a hundred dollars under that rock over there. I don't know. I don't know. I really need to get sharper at like making these like fun little prop bets because <laughs> Far. so far like henry and i were doing prop bets when i was commentating like okay. i lost every single one what were they okay the <laughs> what happened it wasn't that bad it wasn't that bad <laughs> well the one okay the one that really was shocking was that i i took i took the field versus steve o'dwyer with 16 left and o'dwyer had under 15 and even money even yeah you're on easy. the right side you're of printing that. easy printing and he won, didn't he? well here's what happened and i think that i did pretty well with you know setting this one up because i said i want o'dwyer versus the field what odds will you give me and he said i'll give you even and i was like that's a terrible deal and he was like no it's a great deal and i said okay then you take it yeah. and then he was like fine I'm wow. sure. so then he took that o'dwyer had less than 15 bigs he ends up getting two outed down to like eight bigs i'm like yes then two out someone else and i'm like no <laughs> and then ends up you know just winning the whole sure, thing sure so that was like the biggest one i think but so yeah like the, he's taking a bath there even money is insane right even if he was like a massive chip leader with that many people left like, yeah it's 16 left like yeah, there's i get everybody else and it wasn't like a bad like people they weren't bad they were like there was one of the Dutch high It wouldn't matter guys. if it was the but, 150 daily that we're all trying to play. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you're who never won. You're never 50 50 to win an event with 16 left. Yeah. So. Steve O'Dwyer is. But yeah. And then. Um, <laughs> okay. So you ran bad. Yeah. And then, you know, we just did a bunch of other ones like that. I said, like, I'll take. I was always betting on Ton Mulder because just love him. Mm. Um, and then at the tournament, I bet this random guy that like there was three open seats and one of them that had just busted was a woman and he was like oh like i wonder if any other women will show up like i'll give you three to one like that a woman shows up so my 10 to his 30 if a woman shows up okay in one of the seats yeah Chewy was the first one i'm like no chewy go a different table He's oh like, you took the side of a woman coming yeah it's I mean, you know the stats. I know. It's like nine to one. <laughs> I know. Listen, <laughs> chronic optimist. Chronic optimist. But I was like, I could win 30 bucks <laughs> off just putting up 10. Oh, that's not. That, that's how should, they get you. I you know. should have offered him four to one uh, the opposite way. Uh, You've still been printing. Yeah. You should have said, no, I don't want that, but I'll offer you four to one that a woman shows up and see if he snaps oh, it. Oh, see, I need to do that, uno yeah. reverse. Until I did you that finally with negotiate the nine to one you deserve. Yeah, I did that with Henry. And he was like, actually, the only reason I took that was because you, like, I have my ego. Like, you, yeah, you, you, you reversed it on me. Of course, of course. You put him in a bad spot. Yeah, don't give people nine to one. You played a little baseball back in the day, no? I, that's why I wanted to, to go to that thing. Yeah, so we want to do, we want to do, like, an actual, like, full-fledged game. Uh, just get, like, a bunch of content creators out there. Snap in. Yeah, it seems so, like it's a good idea, right? Like, what's your baseball background? Pitched. I need Tommy John surgery, so. Hmm. But I'll swing a bat and like. You, you oh, played you for like Tommy John League. You played for something important. I or? tried to play like in college, but like, I, don't know, I played in high school. At the time. How oh, old were nice. you when you got Tommy John? I didn't. I don't. Ha I didn't have it because I wasn't ever going to. You needed like, it if you I wanted it. If I wanted Bro, to continue playing, it wasn't going to happen. You had the <laughs> yeah. cheat code. What's Tommy John? No, I didn't. It was it's a surgery. I was going to the MLB, so it's like expensive surgery, year-long recovery. Yeah. Doesn't it make you really good though? Is yeah. Like, yeah. It is a cheat code. It gives yeah. you a bionic Everybody arm. Comes you, get, back you become a ten miles an hour harder. Kind of sick. I wasn't gonna make it. How 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 hard were you throwing when you tore it? I topped it like eighty five. Bro. Ninety five. Ninety five is a five eight person. In high There's school. still time. Pedro. There's. 
There's still time. He's an exception. No, right. he's not throwing 85 now. Let's do it. Yeah, he, he's, let's give you know, him some time. Sign me All up, right, let's get him surgery, baby. <laughs> surgery, <laughs> surgery. Surgery. New profession. Surgery. Pitcher. That, that is the dream. Yeah. You were you were 18 when you tore? 17. 17? I don't know. Yeah, you were still so seven was... years away from being fully developed, throwing 85. Listen, you had a shot. You get it. Oh Come my God! Like, no, no, hold on. You know what, Matt? If, if that was Matt, Matt would be like, "I can do it." My dream of being a pitcher. <laughs> Wait, why wouldn't just you just get the surgery? I would have had Tommy John the next day. <laughs> why no, wouldn't listen, you just get it? I can it? take you to Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. can you they'll just fix get you it? up good. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, you'll be throwing in no time. <laughs> you'll be throwing a hundred. <laughs> you'll, throwing... you'll be throwing in no time, bro. They also give you a little sticky icky, and all of a sudden you're good. They give you some like horse. All of a sudden, are you lefty? No, I'm righty. You will be. Lefty. <laughs> You'll be lefty too. You could, you could be an ambidextrous pitcher by the time they're Did done. You, That'd be fun. Do you know the story of Billy Wagner? What about him? He used to be a closer for the Mets. I know uh, who he is. I don't know the story okay. or anything. So he was right handed. I know his story. He was right hand he he's born right handed. Oh. He threw right handed until he was like nine or ten. And he broke his clavicle playing football and then learned to throw left this guy threw hundred and three miles an hour from the left side. Yeah, I can't hit him on the show. I play MLB the show all the time. Right. Yeah, he <laughs> throws gas. Yeah. That's not even his natural arm. Do you know how oh, rigged that is? It's I disgusting. Just, I actually tried that for a whole summer. I was throwing against the wall by myself, throwing lefty because I couldn't pitch it. And I was like, all right, let's, how hard would it be to learn how to pitch lefty? Hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even trying to write lefty is hard. Bro, that would be one of the sickest stories. Like, Rampage, he's like a poker player, then gets surgery. No, sorry. Poker player runs up the bankroll, gets surgery, tries out for the MLB, the makes it to the, the MLB. Bankroll challenge for Tommy, Tommy John, John, John surgery. Let's go, dude. Like, that's God. fucking insane. Well, Sorry, the problem is three, built yeah. from there. Yeah. the problem is now that if you had it repaired, which it probably like scar tissued over, like there's probably a ton of scar tissue. Know. It's partially torn. It's not fully torn. Yeah, it's not even okay, fully so torn. It, it it's probably tear it. <laughs> probably healed oh, to some degree but anyway if you were to get tommy johns or if, if you even still needed tommy johns or whatever now the 10 miles an hour that you'd be adding would be on top of like you know the 72 that you can yeah but he throw. builds it up that's what's happening with Haley. like she's trying to no make no but back. that's that's why tommy john's so effective it's mm. it's supposedly the rehab so it's the it's yeah. the building up process oh, that makes you stronger gosh. and throw harder i think that's bullshit though like i could do those exercises without getting the surgery well you get extra ligament that's it you get like a, a boosted strength. You get you, you basically become like bionic. Stronger. You get the like, extra ligament. Your width doesn't come from your elbow. I, yeah, that's true. It's you know it's all wrist. Well, you're doing all. Well, you're actually doing all like full body recovery. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I mean, here's the thing. This is why I said it's bullshit. Is because like that's what all the the <laughs> high level trainers are saying. They're yeah. just like, yeah, yeah, we put them through such an intensive rehab. Well, then you look at it's everyone like, else that's come back from the MLB recently, and they're all just struggling. Well, oh, yeah, that's, that's the other thing is your shelf life is very short. <laughs> Why not just throw harder? <laughs> if, if only it were that easy, man. Trust me. If only Dude, it were that like easy. I, can, I can only throw this fast. Just, just throw the ball harder then. Just, just it's a it. weird science, too, because it's not, like, it's not like softball. So there's a perfect technique to pitching underhand because I it's like a natural softball movement. softball pitchers can just blast like pitchers. And well, it's, fine. it's a natural movement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is normal to us. Oh, yeah. This is very restricted right. and, like, right. awkward. Oh, and, oh, yeah, like. And there's, yeah, there's no there's perfect things. overhand pitching uh, dynamic, right? Like some people throw from here, some throw from here, some right. throw from down here. And each and every one of those uh, different arm slots has a different stress point, mm -hmm. right? So like you're either going to be stressing your, your elbow, your ulnar nerve a little bit more, or your rotator cuff. And, and there's all these injuries born off of it. Wow. But something about that Tommy Johns, it's like <laughs> it, it lets them come back with this added boost but it also reduces their career by like 50 percent mm. maybe because they're maybe able to go harder so the intensity is higher but then but like how the they're like the rest of their body is not a their durability uh, is lower because the rest of their body's so not caught up to the fact that they're throwing like 10 miles an hour harder. right yeah strasberg had tommy johns twice Stra right yeah i don't know what's going on. he's still out i don't know why yeah Sale, i mean he's getting sales been out not everyone's just struggling you follow MLB close? Like here and there, not nothing crazy. Red Sox fan? I was until I started betting on sports, and now <laughs> I lost all my fan. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Now you just don't care. Now I'm just like, all right, I'll, I'll care for wherever my money is. Sure. Do you still yeah. bet on sports? Uh, or now you're not a gambler, as much? I'm trying to so. fade the worst teams in the MLB. I have that experiment going on. I was thinking about that. Uh, okay. 
So, so you're when did this start? You're against the pirates every day. I am against the pirates yep. every single day. Oh man, you're making a lot of money. <laughs> you should be. He yeah, should yeah. be. They lost nine in a row, so I hope oh, you're no. on the other side for that man. stretch. <laughs> but you know what they did do? They did sweep those Dodgers. They swept those Dodgers. Oh yeah, that was, that was the most painful. That was awesome. <laughs> that was are you happy about that? That well, yeah, was I'm, such a painful yeah. series. Because they're, the Dodgers were always like minus 300. Yeah, of course. Every game. So bad. Yeah. Against the, against the <laughs> As they should be. That was a fat L. As they should be. That People got killed that bet that. The Pirates yeah. only beat really good teams. Yeah, it's weird. It's not. It's That's because so they're, they're playing it up. You know, like they're they're mm -hmm. ready to go. They're yeah, like, I this think is a challenge. Rigged. That's how I am. I if issue. I'm playing versus somebody who I know is good, I feel like I play way better. But if it's like I said this on table, I'm like, eh, whatever. I said this on an earlier podcast where as a Steelers fan, uh, I know what it's like to follow a team that's just a perennial winner, but also has the habit of playing down to their competition. Mm -hmm. Being a Pirates fan, you get to see what it's like following a team where the other good teams play down to you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is like, oh, the Dodgers stink. Oh, no, wait, we stink, yeah. and they're just and taking then, a day off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They just brought their AAA squad up. I mean, the entire franchise is a farm system for the rest of the MLB. Hmm. Like, players move through so quickly. I haven't learned the name of a player since Kutch was there. Listen, O'Neill Cruz coming up today. He's our number one prospect. Oh, he finally got called up. Yeah, he's yeah, called he up called today. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. He's, he's like the tallest shortstop in, like, has ever played MLP. Is Cole Tucker still on there? No, he they DFA'd him. I think he ended up in um he's just living his best life. Tampa, I think Vanessa he ended Vanessa. up in Arizona. That's really I think Arizona picked him up. I don't know if he's I don't know oh, if they called him up. But, that's 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 the only Yeah, there you go. Yeah, him. exactly. Now he can just shoot over to California. Wait, to who? Huh? Vanessa Hutchins. He's dating. Oh. Uh, this is like 23-year-old. Wow, oh, that's strong. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Vanessa Hudgens is uh, High School Musical. High School Musical, yeah. That's Gabriella. weird to me. Mm -hmm. That's weird to me that we're in a day and age where it's shocking to me to hear an athlete dating uh, a celeb. Who else do they date? What? Uh, well, sorry, a low-profile athlete okay. dating a celebrity. Like, I think <laughs> that was the point. She's a Pittsburgh pirate dating a celebrity. <laughs> right. yeah, She's yeah. investing. She's investing. <laughs> She's getting in early. That's right. You know, he's She's young. Sharp. She knows he's going to probably not. blow he's, up a little. No, no? Not, Okay, no. well, you know, she might not know the sport very he well. well no, she'll actually, ask for a trade soon. I take that she'll back. Take, the Pirates dfa him, so he will blow up now. Okay, yeah. He'll be one of the best players in the league, and we'll be, like, shaking our heads again. Like, what are we doing Got to get in early. There goes the down bad Pirates again. Yep. Yeah, I think I think Rampage needs an enforcer. That's what you need. Like a bodyguard? He no, has just... one. He's standing right there. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this guy fucking arm wrestled me on on break. Straight up enforcer. Like he just wanted to embarrass me too. How much you still know you... his name? Yeah, Landon told me. And, and it is Mike. <laughs> Yo, Mike, how much do you charge? Oh, well, it seems, oh. it seems redundant. <laughs> it, seems, it seems more important for you to know where I learned the name than you actually hear your name repeated. The people don't understand don't what's happening. I don't think that's true. There's literally, yeah, I don't know what's there's going literally on. a person on the side here grilling me the whole time. Like, <laughs> is it you that owes him money? He wants I'll to arm wrestle you. Because I'll fucking get you, dog. Oh, yeah. I'll get you won the arm wrestle? Right wrestle. Arm wrestle right now on the Did you lose? Uh, I lost right-handed, as I expected. And then I won left-handed. Are you lefty? Yeah. He oh. left-handed. I also use that as an excuse to get out of arm wrestling. So, the, so people are like, yo, let's arm wrestle, bro. I well, look did at his, not yeah, think that. his arms get complimented every day. I yeah. The first Listen, here, here's, what, <laughs> here's what people need to understand about me. The better shape that I am in, the worse life go. situation that I'm mentally in. Like, I'm down bad if I'm in good shape. <laughs> I'm down real bad. I don't understand why you can't Wait, just piece so when, it all together, when man. When you were eating the steaks every day, and yeah, you, know, so you were a little, Oh, you know, I was so you were, you were happy. rich. I was so, rich I couldn't happy. lose. <laughs> right. I was on like a 30 game win streak. <laughs> nice. Eating a fucking wow. ribeye a day. Where's your discipline? I put discipline? on like 35 That's pounds. Where the fuck is your discipline? The discipline comes out whenever everything else goes to shit. Yeah. That's the anchor, Landon. But, but maybe everything goes to shit because the discipline's gone. No, there's there's plenty of happy mediums. Okay. Like there, there's a lot of like there there's I spend a lot of time where it's like I have a very good balance of mm -hmm. work, life, social. Right. And I'm in like I'm in, you know, that fifteen to seventeen percent body fat range. Yeah, you're cruising. Yeah. When I get down to twelve, you should be worried. It's you should be, uh, you should be taking my shoelaces. Yeah. Like it's like, oh shit, <laughs> Berkey looks like well, once he you, can compete once you right started now, telling like, me to bring home ice cream and cookies, I'm like 
That's no, this is brutal, man. That's because, like, yeah. I've had my depress depressive stage. Like, I was really down bad. I was really down sad. I put on so much weight. This now I'm so like, happy. Now I'm up amazing. Yeah, like Shut summer. up. This some white people shit. I've been, no, I've been no, rich for years. Opposite. I've been rich for years, and my I've never been 12%. Like, I've been 37%. Yeah, but that's I've been why rich. you've been rich yeah, for years. Crazy, bro. This is some white people <laughs> shit. Like, whatever. No, that's what years. I said. I said I'm more likely to be fat when I'm happy. All right, then start eating. <laughs> it doesn't work that start way. Eating, yes, it and does, then you'll Berkey. start making money. No, no, no. It's, it's like, like you get happy from food. You play well. You I do not get again. happy from food. No, it's the opposite. He, Everything he is going really food. well, so I get sloppy with my discipline. Berkey's war on food. <laughs> Someone always says food. it in the yeah. chat whenever you start. We shouldn't have dinner break. Oh, there's Berkey and his war on food. <laughs> that's, that's a war on time. <laughs> Listen, that has nothing to do with food. I just want all of my time back. I don't want to play 15-hour yeah. days. Oh. It's really Some of these days are extremely miserable. down horrendous, yeah. I would ask if, if you know, but, you know. I don't know what a day two is. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Not yet, you don't. Nope, not yet. But you right. will. I've only, God, made you one. Will. I've only made one and I punted it off. Is so, that, yeah. anybody playing the freeze out? <laughs> Besides me? I'm, no? Just you. Brian, you can go I'm the want. only one. I'm going. You're going? I'm All going. right, Landon. Landon going. loves it. I love I'm it, man. Landon I love it. There's a 5k 6 max tomorrow, but like yeah. the EV of bagging the freeze out if, it, if you do oh, is worth so much. I'll be there. Yeah. And it's, it's also a two-day event. Why do you guys not want to play it? The young crowd. Yeah, the youngins are going to go. It. The youngins and Brian. All the people. <laughs> yeah, but Brian doesn't count on the, misery, on the miserable scale because he's not. He's retired. He's a rack. He's retired, yeah. But yeah. we're on I'm the low, young aged. And still have something. We don't forget where we came from. Love. $500 buy-ins. Where you came from, you're still there. Wow. <laughs> not not financially, too. but like you're still there uh, as far Playing. as like. That's why we can remember it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's barely in the <laughs> rear view. You can turn around and wave. You yeah, know? but I remember used to have to sell being, to them. Being grateful of <laughs> playing a $500 buy. Gratitude, baby. It's all That's, about gratitude. That I always remind myself of. Like the fact that we live in this world where we're literally firing thousands of it's dollars insane. with hope like when it's yeah. not outside, normal yeah i was having this conversation yesterday it's that's like, what makes me sad no what do you mean that should make you know how lucky you are <laughs> you're the worst it's, we're you're literally white, like you're rich you're that rich. Does, that stuff doesn't you make me sad you have muscles you have, you you're have strong, arms and rich you, you, that stuff doesn't make me sad you've been, married or you you've don't been have playing kids. for 40 years and you're still here why do you keep putting an emphasis on the things that don't make me sad the things that make me sad are are the idea that we take all this capital and the only purpose of it is to attempt to grow. Is to burn it in yeah. tournaments. <laughs> Just no. light it on fire yeah. and see if we can sift through the ashes and find a little bit more. What no. else would you like? Well, yeah, I mean, what we're want, investing. Matt? No, I, look, I enjoy, I enjoy poker. Conrad's oh. out. R.I.P. Moment of silence for Conrad. Moment of silence oh. for Conrad. The tab Damn. will never be fully paid. Damn. That Played tab is early. never getting fucking paid You're down. never getting paid. God. But it doesn't matter. You're so rich and I white. Mean, the and if he won it, it's still, it doesn't cover the tab. <laughs> he needed a top three finish. Yeah. For sure. Wow. How rich are you? Your not, tab is I'm that not. Big? <laughs> that credit. That, I, well, I was ready to ask for a Conrad tab. I was going to start a tab with him. Everyone's going to start a tab with that's, Conrad. That's the, that's the play right there. Damn, he's probably so sad right now. No, he's not. He's not already. No, he's, he's already going to register. He's already registered. 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 He's before I even see the open, I'm like, I'm out. Like last five hands of the night and I have ace king, this is it. And then he opens and then call and I raise and then he jams and then the other guy calls the jam and I'm just like, I'm dead, but here you go. And then I just run out the straight, everyone out they're all sweating it. And, and then I'm day just two, like, I'm ready to cared. go, whatever. Day two when you care. I cared on day two because I had a stack out. and then I was card dead. And then I just you know, peak incinerated I, you know, I on day two, off, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Self sabotage, you know. Connie we'll probably talk about cared a little bit. Yeah. Connie probably cared a little bit today. Cared a lot. Yeah, today. He, he cared a lot today. He cared a lot today. He cared all today. yesterday. He ran it up to he like one point five million on the shit river. He cared a lot today. Yeah, that's the problem. See, Elio Fox, he doesn't give a fuck. No, so no. he's gonna win. Elio's a gangster dude. No, he just doesn't care. He's like, oh, this is a fucking fifteen hundred. Yeah, he's like, I literally have twelve million in earnings on him. Yeah, last week. He hasn't combed his hair in like three years. That's yeah, but it's not it, it like works though. Right. Like, that's that's the just secret. How, like, it it's looks... like the Einstein, right? Yes. Like Einstein just ne he's like, I don't have time to comb my hair. I'm fucking winning. And he's like <laughs> low, very like low key. Like yeah. his table presence is very like mm -hmm. you know, 
you wouldn't think that he's like this like grandmaster. Exactly. But he is like because he's very you know he's pleasant mm-hmm. and he's just yeah. kind of For this guy. I don't know who care. Elio Fox is. Who? He's a superstar that nobody knows about. <laughs> he mashes high rollers. Yeah, there you go. Plays he's live. Yeah, plays online. He, yeah this, this is, is guy him. right here. And he, he was what well, he was mashing the GG 25Ks. Yep, one of the non Did really well in the GG 25Ks. Yeah, well, beating the cheaters. Interesting. Yeah, I played with him, yeah. and I didn't actually didn't know. I don't know a lot of people like in poker that I should know. Like I'm very like out Still of the there. loop pop culture wise in poker. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like I I, they'll be like, you don't know. I'm like, ah, I, I don't know. Brad know. Owen and yeah. Jimmy. It's fine. You that's, need someone. I got you. I know yeah. everyone. Like I don't know who people. So I sent a photo of the a little sneaky photo of the table, and then they're like, "Wow, you got the nut low table draw." I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> All right. thanks, well. sure." <laughs> and of course, he's two to my left, so we're playing like the most pots together. There's button versus big blind. At least I, I have position. position though. You yeah. improved that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, got better. No, I, I, and I enjoyed playing with him because I know he's very good. So I kind of. I like to be like you challenged to if I'm gonna be, but I, I'd prefer to have a really soft table. You want to but... be challenged, or you want to be rich? Yeah, that's the. Issue. Listen, I wanted a challenge, and no, I had to pay for it. I mean, it. but if I if I'm going to like, I'm forced to play in that seat, you know. So it's like I might as well see the positive in it, and the positive is yeah, I get to fair. I get that's, to have my skills tested. That's that's good. I like you know, that. I, like I I don't mind that. It's better than being against a bunch of like. Ms. Regs, who are like tight as fuck and like just you know sitting there rolling their eyes at everything I do. Like that's I'd much rather play with someone who's like rolling elite. their eyes internally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> sometimes, I think I earned his respect a little bit. Okay. Sometimes externally. Sometimes like I'll see something like a bet or like a hand at showdown and it's go like, it's give like a look to myself. That's, I'm like that's I do not that. the same as an external eye roll. Mm. Yeah. I, I do it too. Ex- I'll I'll be a little puzzled by some things. I think, yeah. I think some puzzled. Yeah, you're judgy. Puzzle. We get it. I'm judgmental. I mean, we're all judgy. <laughs> you know, you gotta judge. It's some like things. I know that spot. Landon's, you don't. Landon's but then there's other spots that I don't know. You made a Remember? you made a tale in three parts on the, Twitter. <laughs> the WSO, tale of WSOP featuring Landon was incredible. That tweet was really good for me. He he's like, like that when we're watching like uh stream games and stuff. Oh, like, he's well, that's way different. He's in private. No, he's yelling. He's screaming, yeah. How do these people play this big? No, it's a range bet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a range bet. It's a speaking, range bet. Speaking of yelling at live streams, uh, we we did a featured piece on you not so long ago in our early podcast days. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the rampage you, was scary. We decided to mm. challenge the goat himself. I didn't want to be rich. I just wanted to challenge. Him. Exactly. Yeah. See, but sometimes it's about the challenge. You and me that both, buddy. Out. God, he's s- become that rich. <laughs> like, remember, you challenge rich, but I'm not we're, white, so yeah. right. Marky's always got that. Up. Yeah, he's on his own island over there. That means you're in the point one percent. You're you're even more elite. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I'm so elite, I can just dust off 100k. Well, also, you know, you have a side income, a little side hustle. But what would I, I guess like we we had a lot to talk about on that. So walk us a little bit through what I your like experience was. To that actually. That was fun. It's funny because I thought we were like pretty critical. Really? I well, thought you could have been more critical. I thought specifically Christian was very critical. Because um, I, I care about him more. You guys could have been more critical. <laughs> but, you know, we kind of, we covered that and then we covered the po- Poker Bunny, like a little bit of a meltdown or whatever on Hustler a week later. And I thought we treated that scenario with a lot more kid gloves than yours. Uh, That's because we love you. Baby. In the sense that, you know, yours was... Yours was definitely laying down a gauntlet, right? Like, mm-hmm. not only did you go play high stakes, it was that the biggest game you had played at that point? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, so not only are you playing... <laughs> yes, thanks for reminding no, me, I yes. Play, I remember playing 51, 501k at, at Bobby's room. Oh, <laughs> boy. Are you, are you trolling? Okay, what was so, the closest so, stakes you had played to that before then? The day before? Oh. Oh, Let's was go, it? dude. It was like, it was <laughs> half the Which you also okay. got wrecked in. <laughs> yeah, that's why I wanted to play bigger. Right. Let's okay. right. fucking yeah. go, Okay, okay. So, so between those two sessions, biggest games that you've ever played, uh-huh. uh, sat down with 500 big blinds? I guess. <laughs> and, <laughs> and took all of them, yourself? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. How okay. big is this guy's dick? Right. Jesus exactly. Like, like, this, you guys nailed it. It was for the. It was for the video. It was yeah. real. Yeah. 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 Dick off I'm free rolling the th- the title and thumbnail. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you paid, was yeah it wasn't free rolling. You paid quite the cost when Garrett gets two to your left. Yeah, that was a bad seat draw. Yeah. 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 Not not very you lucky draw there. Better than yeah. that. Not lucky, no. I don't know, that was fun. I think I would have had a contingency plan of like, okay, I'll buy him for 100K if Garrett is across the table or to my right. Yeah, so every he was the last person to come. He showed up late and every seat was being filled 
until that one, oh, it's like, no. oh no, he's not yeah. here yet. What's happening? Right. Yeah, and yeah, honestly, sure. like, uh, you know, we're we're kind of portraying this as like Garrett is like this un unstoppable force, and it's not that. It's just that he's the best player in the game who will one hundred percent of the time cover you. Yeah. And that's not fun. Like playing five hundred big lines deep out of position and he's is just significantly yeah. better than yeah, it's not anyone fun. else. And they're always going to cover you, and they're always down to make the game as big as possible, and it's just like. Oh, it's even easier to make it big too whenever you're in that situation. Yeah. Uh, 500, 50, 100, 200, 400, 800. What? 1,600? <laughs> yeah. Straddle all The around. game is afoot, yeah. yeah. That happens Go at Resorts World sometimes. It happens fast. That ever I at heard that game? happened at uh, Bally's. Oh, yeah? Well, 100, 200 popped off. And it was in King's Lounge? In King's Lounge. Wow. And it was an 800. Where he? Hmm. Where were you? Where were I you? didn't hear anything about this game. You, you like, need some scouts in the King's yeah, Lounge. Yeah. I do need to I'm do a better job of... And, yeah, it was big. You played it? No, I didn't play it. I was playing my $800 tournament. I was having a <laughs> Discipline. Playing nightly. There you go. Playing, playing that nightly. nightly. A I'm disciplined like young man. Nightly. Yeah. You, you've recouped all those losses and then some in tournaments. Uh, no? At the moment. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It goes it, fast, point, mind you. Yeah, it's just an up and down, never-ending, swingy roller coaster ride. Yeah. So. How do you feel about that? Just... The journey I overall. actually resonated with what you said. You DM me one time and you're like, What'd I the say? Money never lasts or something. Money I said, just comes and goes. I said, Jesus. Money never lasts. Something yeah. like that. I was like, Oh, this is true. Yeah. 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 You just fire tournament after tournament. And yeah. if you win, then like, All right, it's more bullets. Yeah. Like, you don't really leave. You know, like, you're not really in an exit plan. <laughs> no. So, no... like, you're just going to stay <laughs> until you want to leave. I mean, but right you now, you want to stay. some off and put it to the side, Jesus. maybe invest it. Yeah, or invest something. it and then it turns into 50% less. And, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then it turns into less. You know, yeah. Invest it's in Luna and then it's yeah. gone. Much less. Yeah. Yeah. It's a never ending cycle of just losing. Yeah, yeah, and trying not to lose that, and then winning some, and then looking like it's gonna, I'm gonna lose this again. But then maybe I'll win more than that what maybe. I lost. Yeah. Maybe. Welcome to tournaments. Yeah. Yeah, like I wish cash games were at least it's stable. I know. I really like cash a lot. Stable in what way? Well, not my. You can definitely downswing, but it's. Stable. I get, you can like it's more stable in tournaments. You're not just burning money right. every single time. Basically, you usually get at least some of your money back if you lose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Sometimes. less boomer bust. You're entering yeah. a tournament and it's just like, eighty percent of the time. It's more happens. stable, but definitely more capped, right? Because it with yeah, tournaments, like you fire, 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 and then sometimes you it win. It depends on cap. Like long term, you're only making like X percentage of your buy-ins. Please right. teach this man. Do you like tournaments or cash more? <laughs> I don't know. I what do you know. feel in your heart? What does your heart tell I you? I don't know. I want to just some. I just want to like not play poker today, but I have to. <laughs> you have <laughs> to. No, no let's talk point. about this. Do you have to? Yes. Why? Because he an needs opportunity. content. What? I don't know. It's an opportunity to play, and it's and I want to win a bracelet. It's also an opportunity to take a day off and relax. Not can't. during WSOP, right? No. You can take a day off. That's. No, you can't. You can. I don't can't, know. I don't know, man. He has to make content. I you don't have content. to do anything. Like, I just think cash is so fun. Like, it's just the best. It's and it's the, the best. more fun, especially like the games that you're playing. Yeah. They're much more fun. It's really fun. She does not say this when she gets crushed. No, I don't. No. <laughs> like, everybody and to be just... fair, like, I've been getting crushed At least you're, like, having some drinks at the table usually, and then people are having a good time. They're, in tournaments, you're laughing. just, like, you're just by yourself grinding, yeah. and no one's talking for 10 hours straight. And then you have... We have a very different you tournament You have Mr. Experience. UK over there who's <laughs> randomizing every decision, every size. Rando C. Oh, it's flop. It's a I gotta fucking tell you. flop, and he's randomizing and sitting we there tanking. We have a very very different tournament experience my tables are chock full of fun players who are there to have a blast they're chatting you up more than i to, want to talk they're just happy to play with Bur no the i just have Berkey. really good players on my left i had chris that must be on be my because left you're rich and out. white yeah, that's, that's it. You're yeah, rich, you're white, you've been playing poker for 40 years. Yeah. You have, you, wait, you're selling a multi million dollar home. Like, it's nice life, dude. Big arms. Like, yeah, this, big arms. Yeah. People always compliment you on your arms. Uh, I'm not going to accept 25 this gaslight. And you know, you know what the most important part of all of that is? Is he is a friend and support system who love him. Yep. Yes. We, we, we love, love that you, man. We love that for you. We love you. We love that. We love that for you. He's so loved. You're so loved. You can see it in his eyes. I will burn this fucking place to the ground. <laughs> and then he'll collect the insurance and that make more he's money. Yeah, this guy's on the fucking grind. <laughs> God. Mm -hmm. uh, insurance fraud. That's what the you grind. need is like maybe uh, a like doomer. a sugar mama, but that will like sugar mama all of us <laughs> as your like honorary children. Get your like, own sugar mama. Let us stay there. Yeah, please let <laughs> us stay. I would stay. get a sugar mama if I could.
God. You could. I'm Berkey's, an orphan. Berkey turns down sugar mamas. That's how good life it's crazy. is. crazy. Sorry for having some self I would take a sugar mama. Like, I don't want a sugar daddy. It's a little <sighs> scary. But a sugar Cringe mama, word. maybe we could, like, bake together, you know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she could be the mom I've always wanted. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, man. Are, uh, you, are you a permanent Vegas resident now? I have a temporary ID. Yes. Mm. Okay. I've made the move. <laughs> that that doesn't sound very permanent, but okay. Right? You're here though. I'm here. I, I went to the DMV like two weeks ago and I have a temporary ID. So what's oh. the what's the near term plan the next year to three? Uh, continue loving my life playing WSOP. And <laughs> you then, don't sound like you love your life <laughs> playing the WSOP. And then uh, I don't know, make content, play poker, travel. I don't know, whatever floats the boat. Maybe. You still passionate Better. about your life? No, about creating <laughs> content. It's cool. It, it's better than, like, long term is much better than poker. That was always yeah. the thing. But, like, I'm also really loving poker to a certain degree, like, trying to get better and learning and stuff. But, you know. The ceiling and content is, I mean, you're smart. Like, There's, you are, like, in the content, like, world. And that, that industry is just booming. Wait, can yeah. we hire you for um, teaching us how to distribute this podcast? <laughs> Uh, I like I like the idea of podcasts. It's really like a new thing. It's hard it's hard in the poker niche. It's so it's only so big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was going to kind of be my follow up. When we first met, when you came out for Poker Out Loud, uh, you were very adamant. Yeah, I was all over the place. Well, no, you were just very adamant that you were gonna be a content creator. I was trying to my whole life. Yeah. 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 yeah like that was very clear. You're like, I'm mm -hmm. fresh out of college. This YouTube thing's a thing, and I'm going to be the guy who makes it. I would like to. Yeah, that do was the you, goal. Do you think that that's capped now, or do you think that like there's still a path to there, independent it's wealth? It's capped in poker to a certain degree until, unless whatever like our father, the content father, Brad Owen, decides <laughs> on what direction to go with and how big he wants to grow, then we're capped at that right now in the poker space. So if you want to be uncapped, then like just talk about other stuff that's not related to poker. Yeah, are that's you planning what I'm on moving? Hmm? Like, are you planning into moving into other? Uh, it's spaces. a lot of work. Like I was trying to, but then it's like, what's worth my time focusing on what's working right now or trying to grow and build something brand new? Yeah. Well, that's kind of the question, right? Like if you, if you recognize that, like, do you think you're near the ceiling in poker? Uh, I'm, I, the growth has been really slow, like the past four or five months. So maybe, but Brad's like, like five times my channel. So yeah. Who knows? Yeah. That's the issue. So I don't really know like how big poker can be like Neymar winning a bracelet or like Mr. Beast continuing to play big games, like that's gonna keep We need Lisa the game. Vanderpump to win a bracelet. Yes. Mm. And, and then have it be on that's Real it. Housewives mm -hmm. or Vanderpump Rules. I think there hasn't been enough content with Neymar and I don't mm. understand what's going Did on. Did you hear he almost <laughs> got kicked out? <laughs> the what? security guard. Yeah. That was so overblown. Did you read the article? Yeah, well, it wasn't really like he almost got kicked out. It wasn't even the close. The security guard didn't know who he was and told him to leave or something. Well, it wasn't even that. He was just standing up during the bubble. Oh. on the rail with his friends and the security guard came over and said hey no spectators during the bubble play uh -huh. and he's like i'm playing he's like okay go okay play. well whatever <laughs> everyone likes to make a scene out of i'm nothing. trying to be tmz i'm trying it was to, such a know. fucking <laughs> that it was such a gotcha a type of type yeah. of headline yeah i think like i don't know people in, outside of like the vloggers i feel like everyone does content and like distribution of content really bad like no one knows what's going on with the wsp unless yep. nick Rauner's doing it because no one like really cares about Poker Go or watches WSOP or yeah. like WSOP has like ninety thousand followers on Instagram. It gets like two hundred likes per post. Right. Yeah. Like, what is this? I talk about this all the time. Like, what's, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah. So. Yeah. It, I I was complaining a lot about this. Um, we we kind of passed over it in the intro, but even yesterday, uh, you know, in years past, you guys you guys weren't really around in like the the boom days of early two thousands to mid. But Poker News was on, I mean, the media outlets, there were many of them, right? Bluff existed, Card Player, Poker News, Pocket Fives, all of these different outlets and were TV. all here. And what? The and thing TV. Is, the thing is, all and those TV, sites yeah. are so niche. Like, you have to be in the poker world yes. to actually, like, even know about it or check it on a regular basis. Because right. when I was playing poker, and I think a lot of my subscribers, like, what's Pocket Fives? Yeah. Like, what's yeah. State Kings? Or right, but they weren't niche then. Okay. They were mainstream media. Oh, okay. Right? And they were all competing against one another. So they're all here. There were literally five or six podcasts being ran daily on site at the Rio. There were, uh, Poker News was doing all of the, the hand reporting, but there were reporters from 
four or five other different outs, outlets, uh, whether they were magazines or um, media distribution outlets, whatever, they were all there. They're all conducting interviews. They're all trying to get scoops. And what it led to was uh, a lot of creative content being generated on the regular. And there was consistent YouTube content. There was consistent articles, things of that nature. Now it's just Poker News has a stranglehold in partnership with Poker Go. And you're right, nobody cares. And a big reason why no one cares is because they're withholding so much. So like Poker News did a, a daily breakdown on Sunday of uh, bracelet winners. They did a bit with, yeah, uh, with Tiffany Michelle and a few other things. And it was great. It was well done. They didn't even share it on their social. I found it because the algorithm recommended it to me. I watched it. It was good. I tweeted and said, why on earth am I the one tweeting this and not Poker News? Like, this is oh, maddening. They had, they had zero, it had been out yeah. for five hours and they hadn't promoted it anywhere. Yeah, it makes no sense. Right, when so it's like, how do you expect people to know? Like, like Rex and enthusiasts of poker, like yeah. check out all these other sites, podcasts? Or then they did. Now, yeah. well, it wasn't even just Rex, it was the hardcores too. <laughs> right, I mean, well, the hardcores are always going to... Well, now I don't think up. the hardcores even care. Okay. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, I think of like us as yeah. hardcores and none of us are consuming any of this content. No. Right. Yeah, I don't understand like these li the live reporting of all these tournaments. Even I'm in the tournament, I barely even check because I don't really care. Right. And I'm sure, I mean, like, I think I would be more apt care. to watch videos, like like get little clips of like the bust outs and the table talk and stuff. Like they like it's. Yeah. I think that that there could be a lot of opportunity for just like it's entertaining content when you see like you see them writing the table talk sometimes, but like I want to see it. Yeah, they don't do enough boots on the ground stuff. Like we're come on. We don't need to handwrite these hand histories any longer. No. You can include them in some sort of like caption or, or breakdown, but everybody has a phone. Yeah. You know, and you can get really high it. quality video. It's yeah. like they were doing it shortly. I remember a Venetian was a WPT or something where like they had like a moving camera. I remember Joe McKeon like busting out and they would like show it a highlight mm. of like the hand. Like yeah. and it, then he busted. They, they would film him like getting up. And it wasn't like that was an update. And I was like, wow, that's really well done. And then I, I think it was WPT that did it. it. It was really good. But that goes to show like the concept that you guys are doing. They did test it. Yeah. I don't know what happened to it. They took a it. video of the bust out for, of me and Chrissy, but they didn't put it anywhere. They just sent yeah, it that's... to me in DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to post this. It's like right. rude. <laughs> yeah. Like stuff like that. They can start <laughs> doing, yeah. they can start doing that a lot on day threes, right? Mm. Three tables down. Yeah. Uh, you know, follow the way World Poker Tour follows like their majors. Mm -hmm. yeah. They just don't care because again, like it's all third party. So Poker News gets paid by WSOP and they don't get paid a ton, I'm sure. So yeah, yeah there's I, no I'm, like there's no need for competition, I guess, right now. I guess that's the right. thing. You said or back then all of them were like trying to thrive and compete with each other. There's no yeah. need mm -hmm. right now because I don't know, everyone I just really shows up to the like, main. They all take turns into like which Whichever like event is the biggest. Yeah, yeah, I said the best thing that could happen to the space is they just like let us uh, grassroot it. So like the vloggers, the podcasters, whatever, they all just like rush down to the World Series and do their damnedest to cover it. Which is not what kind of what's going on in WCP right now. Yeah, but we're all in the sneak, right? Like we have to do a podcast from our studio. You have to film hands without anybody catching you. It's yeah, all kind of on the yeah. low. I mean, we don't have like actual direct permission to do it. Yeah. Right. But for the most part, like imagine there. if we could just have Melissa down there on breaks, like going through and just firing funny questions at Oh my at God, randos. I'd love to do that. Yeah. You should do it. Just do it. You'd be very Maybe good I at will, it. yeah. You Maybe would... I'll do that today. I'll be like, so. I, I always find somebody really funny at my table, like that old Asian man who yeah. I'm now friends with. Yeah. He's like, good morning, Melissa. Do you want a cappuccino? But like, we're like, <laughs> and he you? kept coming over to my table being like, you need to double. And I'm like, I know, man. And then at the end of the night, he comes over and he goes, you did it. You can get me a coffee now. <laughs> Let's go. But like, there's always like funny stuff. I would love to like do some content. Some sideline should, reporting. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I just think that like we've put a hard cap on this industry. Yeah, it's kind of. And it feels I like mean, it's the in biggest decline. difference to me. And like I didn't really come into poker until a few years ago, and I didn't consume any poker, and I didn't really even know people did it professionally. But like it seems like before it was just so mainstream because one, the times were different. Everyone was watching TV, mm. TV channels. Nobody yeah. watches that anymore. Nope. And poker was on those TV channels. 
So it was, you know, and it was in, in advertisements on TV. Like we used to all know what commercials were current and stuff. Now, like who knows what commercials are on now, but like, you know, poker was one of those commercials. A lot of the Billy Mays stuff, like OxyClean. Right. Like, and we would all, you know, recite commercials. That's the first one you go to. I guess, sure. RIP Billy Mays. Yeah, I remember some of the commercials. It was more in the mainstream, like consciousness. Yeah. And now, you know. There was poker Right. Like, I, I, I can't imagine. It's unfathomable yeah. to me. Like, why was there poker on TV? <laughs> I can't imagine. It would be so cool, though. Bring it back. Yeah. Bring it I don't back. think it's just us that's suffering from this, though. I think that, uh, like, sports, to some degree, with the exception of maybe the NFL, I mean, are. Yeah, NFL's Because just that's because right. TV is dying. Yes. The death of TV. People are and, not all watching the same thing collectively anymore. Right. The, the death of TV and the. Uh, the shorter attention span and the need for for um shorter content is creating this like it's just becoming a gap where yeah. nobody knows how to transition yeah all that well i mean i think the closest thing now to having everyone's eyes on the same thing is with like netflix series like netflix is dead. you know no it's not <laughs> like stock maybe their stock is dead, is dead. I mean, no the yours... stock is dead and the subscribers are are declining but okay quarter. netflix or it doesn't have to be netflix but just oh, i streaming. get what you're saying the streaming yeah, industry the right, streaming. But like, yeah. well they're only declining because it was covid like of course you can't reach like covid numbers yeah That's but his correct. point his point's very valid in the sense that uh the the big appeal to netflix is the the rate at which you can consume content and it's not youtube right so yeah. they're putting out highly produced very expensive to create content mm -hmm. and people are just watching it in one sitting yeah right so they might put out something that costs well, that's millions why they're of doing dollars the weekly things now yeah yeah they're doing a little bit more of that but uh i guess the the point that i think chin is alluding to is that it's a difficult model to actually maintain profit well group. so the okay let's take euphoria like everybody was watching that every week and tweeting about it and that's like to me that's the closest thing to how everyone used to watch like the same yeah. shows on tv like Disney yeah, yeah. but now it's like yeah. everyone will watch the same streaming shows and talk about it and i think we saw with queen's gambit like what that did to chess yep. and everyone watched queen's gambit and was talking about it and so i feel like that could be the best thing that yeah. would I was happen told to like poker before queen's gambit like a bunch of these Chess channels had like 100k subscribers and boom, like a million. Yeah, yeah. like we were talking to, who, I don't know who, but they, I think it was Nemo. And she, yeah. said, she said that her average viewership was very similar to what a lot of poker Twitch channels get, like between one and 200, like average viewers. And then after Queen's Gambit, like boom, like thousands. Yeah. So like, I just think that probably that would be she still the stream? biggest catalyst for like poker to get into the mainstream eyes and sort of you know yeah there was there was like a teaser right after came it that like maybe rounders mm -hmm. that will never happen compliment has been like pretty i mean i i shouldn't say never never say never but he's been uh pretty trolly good you can say I mean, it. yeah i just think there's so much potential for like plot lines and stuff for what? with um like between like poker and like the high stakes private game like politics and stuff and like take like a show like billions like that type of style of show and sort of making a drama well Koppelman is the uh director of billions oh really yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay so perfect. um <laughs> yeah he, he interweaves a lot of like subtle poker references yeah. there's a poker scene in uh season five i think mm -hmm. um I, I i think all your points are very valid i, I think the bigger struggle is just that like niches are only going to continue to become more niche as uh we transition into this highly available media era and we lose uh we lose like i don't want to call them monopolies necessarily but effectively right like we yeah. lose the nbc's the abc's people are the, sectioning off into their niches more yeah and every more. everything it, it's turning into the internet right yeah. like what the internet actually is uh where you don't really funnel everyone into any single locale and that just becomes prob problematic from the monetization standpoint so yeah. it's not just a poker problem i think that like this is true of like most media yeah yeah there hasn't been like like everyone would watch friends or whatever there hasn't been a show like that that's been very yeah generic and that like captured the entire captures world's everyone. eyes yeah, I'm, not, I'm not wording it right but yeah everyone yeah like, poker niche there's every little little thing on youtube 
right style vlogs. that's that's what I, that's what i think the beauty of, of of youtube is is that it's it's created by the by the people so it's like youtube doesn't have to pay for the content in fact they just like profit share with you whereas right. like netflix has like a pretty trash algorithm like when you log into netflix like it has a very small select comparatively speaking to youtube a very small select of of things to show you and they have to hope that one of these things stick and then when it doesn't they have to reproduce an entire new show for millions of dollars to hope it sticks again and when that fails they have to do it again whereas like youtube just says okay we have the best algorithm in the world because we have all the search engines they have the second biggest search engine in the world and they just like literally just like funnel things to you and they get it for free over and over right. and over again. It's just a, it's, it's a great concept. Yeah. The cost is very So low. I just see YouTube just like overwhelmingly, like as the years go by, continue to have like bigger and bigger market share right, of like the eyes. Guys like Mr. Beast become the production house now. So right. insane. Like, cause I remember when YouTube was just starting as a thing and like I had a channel with my best friend and it was like, What's it called? what was it called? Yeah. It, um, all of our videos are private, person. but I, I should tell her to unprivate them because like we, oh, we had a lot of videos, but we were in like sixth grade and we were just like making funny videos and stuff. Okay. But um, then like having 2000 subscribers was like that. Those were the big people on YouTube. And now it's just like grown so massively and people are really making it. If I knew I would have kept the channel going if I, I think, knew it was I think know, the, be this the big challenge moving forward is going to be that youtube is pretty um they're pretty unfair to their creators uh so their model like christian is saying is um basically to be a search engine right yeah it has very little to do with the actual videos and stuff stuff like that and the monetization path for the creator is highly limited by the fact right. that youtube is continually paying less and less for views monetization uh, probably streamers are able to make a lot more money than on youtube because Through Twitch? yeah yeah because bits and subs and people just throw money at you when you're streaming so yeah there's just like a big tax to uh to creating content on youtube and yeah. i'm saying that as somebody who creates content on youtube <laughs> uh you know ethan could probably speak a little bit more to it since he's bigger and uh generates real revenue as opposed to our peanuts, but um, <laughs> everything I could see, it's just like, you need billions of views to be making any sort of substantial living. Uh, billions, what, like a year or billions? Uh, I guess like throughout the lifetime of the channel. Oh, okay. It, yeah. it also, go ahead. Yeah. I don't know. Go ahead. It depends on like what you're doing. Like if you have a production quality like this, then obviously you need a higher budget. I just use my phone. So it depends on like what it is like. I guess as as a younger person that was trying to do YouTube forever, like I just watched these 15, 16, 17 year olds play Call of Duty and then all of a sudden get millions of views and get like, and just be able to start affording GTRs at age 18. Yeah. And that was like a life changing moment. I was like, oh, this is like a legit thing. You mm-hmm. just have to like kind of make it. And when you look at my channel, like I'm not even like scratching the surface of being a YouTuber or whatever. Yeah. Like, from a YouTube aspect, like 100K is tiny. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess that's the point I'm, I'm the ultimately thing. getting so at. So we're just in this like, niche of already being super small, so it's hard to, like, break through. Right. right. I guess my channel is considered big in the poker space, but in general, it's tiny. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't even... It like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, someone's outside. Guys. Oh, man. Guys. They're, they're angry at the YouTube algorithm. They're yeah, so they angry at the algorithm. Why can't they... Why can't YouTubers grow poker by itself? Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess that's ultimately like, the point I was landing on. It's like a million views is worth a couple hundred bucks. It, well, no, it, it depends. Weird, it it highly depends thousand? on what a you're million, talking about. If you have a million, if you have a like million $10. views in a finance channel, you're going to crush. You're going to absolutely crush because those ads are worth a lot more. It's a higher. Mm. Uh, it depends on your different CTM market. Is. It, it's just a different market. So where you're categorized in YouTube as a poker channel. You're gonna make less if you're a finance channel. You're gonna make a lot more money. Poker on that videos million. actually perform pretty well, right? But I'm saying like the finance, the finance, finance channels make the most yeah, in, in terms of 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 per view and, and things like that. Secondly, I think the model of having uh, like getting direct money from YouTube is slightly starting to change. So uh, a lot of the the big YouTube channels start having their own brands instead of having to instead of Ethan having to sign with Run Good Poker to have like 
his his shirt like he makes his own shirt and these people start buying direct to consumer that he starts selling direct to consumer similar to mr beast instead of like signing to like you know mcdonald's or whatever and like having mcdonald's pay him like he literally just has like beast you know mr beast burgers like things like yeah. this and now he's making <clears throat> He's selling direct to consumer to his entire audience. So it's similar to just like capturing this audience and then selling to them directly instead of yeah. like yeah. having the yeah. companies. That's the cut that YouTube you. doesn't get a, a share. Right. Of they them. don't get a share, right. but it, they still provided you this platform right. for you to now develop this business. Yeah, but you have to have that. But like Beast is a good example of somebody who doesn't do D to C very well, right? Like he's selling merch and he, he did develop this uh, restaurant or whatever, but given how big he is, he doesn't actually offer a lot uh, in ways of his, his outside audience to just funnel him money, right? Like the majority uh, of his revenue is just coming straight through revenue. No. Uh, like he YouTube has revenue. so much. No. He has so the, much. This, this, What's he, he selling ha- other than merch? He has merch. That is already a lot. He has, uh, he just made Feastables, which is like the chocolate thing. And he just did a, mm. he did one huge video of Willy the Wonka chocolate factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. See it? He gave away 500k, but then at the end there's a promo where like he's giving away like 50 other like big prizes if you just purchase. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, thing. sorry. He, he does that... a ton in ad revenue. Okay. Uh, like outside ad revenue. Yeah. Uh, which is a really good example of like when you scale within YouTube, how marketable you become, because that's like the Rogan mentality, right? Like, or the Tim Ferriss mentality, where you're just getting paid like six figures for an ad spot. Uh, I was I was more commenting on like what Christian was saying for people who are trying to grow, and mm-hmm. saying like. Uh, let's offer them a direct to consumer product. It's difficult if you don't even have a business in place because merch can only get you so far. I, like, I mean, at scale though, it's like the, devu- it's a really high, like it's a lot of money merch. I mean, especially like if you just can start outsourcing it yourself. Yeah, merch is the highest margins by far unless you come up with like another product. Right. right. Yeah, you can charge whatever you want with merch. Yeah, 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 yeah. you can charge whatever you want, but like <laughs> if, you're, if you're pricing uh, I, am merch. I mean, I guess that's the thing. You're specialized, right? So it's like, it's particularly your merch and people I've just pay seen more. people like sell $15 hoodies for like $100. That was the point right. I was trying to get at. Yeah. If you're actually pricing competitively with like uh, a store, uh-huh. um, then your margins aren't going to be that great. But if you're able to price a ton more because of celebrity or yeah you know, and you're making it a whatever. brand and that sort brand of that people has can a... just like buy into supporting you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Just... yeah if you get the price in accordance to supreme then of course you're making infinite but if you have to price according to like you know uh an off brand mm-hmm. then the margins are very slim yeah i still welcome think, mike yeah i, I still so, think it's fair pull yeah. the mic pull the mic close to your face mike I don't have much to add to the whole YouTube algorithm. You can uh, you can loosen it on the back and loosen bring it, it close back, to you. So to no, that. no, there's yeah. like a yeah. knob. I don't know yeah. how it worked. I'm just right. sitting up. It's, it's fine. fine. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna sit up too. Okay. 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 Well, we'll Con- conclusion: We all want to be Mr. Beast. Yeah. We do all want to be Mr. Beast. We want to be 22 and and more richer than Berkey. I can't believe how young he is because I feel like it was forever ago that I first heard about him and he was like gifting 10k to people on Twitch like randomly. Well, he's I was been like, doing wow, it for I want like, to stream and get 10k from Mr. Beast. He's been doing it for like a decade. Forever, I just want to know yeah. how much Honey pays him for each ad. I know. Because it has to be like a mil. Wait, like, how much Honey he gets paid? Honey has a lot of like high profile like people. Yeah. They must have a big marketing budget. I, I know Tim like Ferriss said I see that. Honey everywhere. Tim Ferriss said that for a 30 second ad spot on his podcast, he gets paid 500k uh, and forces them to do uh, like a long term deal because he gets so many offers that he cherry picks. Mm. So it's like, if he gets 100 offers, he might only accept five. Who is Tim Ferriss? Wow, incredible. Mm-hmm. Tim yep. Ferriss Who's is a uh, Silicon Valley like, investor. It, his big also. thing is just optimization. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically he, uh, I think he went to Princeton, got, got uh, kind of like wrapped up into the Silicon Valley world, uh, generated a podcast, wrote the book, Four Hour Work Week. And then followed it up with a uh, four hour body, I believe. Uh, so basically, it was like ways to hack and optimize things that we spend too much time on. And he's a popular podcast now. Blew up from that. He was, he was <clears throat> Rogan before Rogan existed. Like he oh. was the, the echelon, the upper echelon of like what you could make podcasting. And then Rogan kind of broke that mold mm. uh, by signing with Spotify. But um, yeah, I, I think the. I don't know, man. The industries move quick is the problem, right? So it's difficult to become a beast because by the time you put in the work in, and figure out the ways to, to navigate that path, 
the industries around you change. Yeah. And like YouTube isn't it anymore. Right? We see this already with like TikTok. Yeah, yeah. TikTok like rose and fell very quickly. I don't know. TikTok's not that it's not still important. TikTok's, it's yeah. still TikTok's booming. Like... Right, let, let me rephrase. Rose and lev leveled off very quickly. I, okay, I don't necessarily yeah. think I mean, it's... during the pandemic, it definitely, that was when the the TikTok influencers were yeah, made. Yeah. Uh, like that was the, all the people who are the biggest TikTokers started Tic like early pandemic. TikTok has one of the best business models, period. Like when you go to the, the tic, first of all, there's two different TikToks. There's an American TikTok and then there's the TikTok in China. So the TikTok in China is experimenting with different, different forms of monetization. So if you're watching a, a TikTok and you like this person's hat uh -huh. in, in the Chinese version, like you can click on the hat. It'll literally show you the price of the hat. You hit it, right. it'll take you to that, to the place to yeah. buy the hat. It'll hyperlink you. Like, it, yeah, pretty, but on all the videos. So wow. now you have all these things, these influencers who are, have these things on. And instead yeah. of you saying like, oh, like, how much is that? How, much is that? Well, how do I get that? Literally just like click it. I think that's it'll send you there. They obviously way. get a piece, but that's that's an incredible it is, business but it's model. that's a fast way to kill the platform i i, I don't know i think that's way to kill like what? in terms of this is how i feel about instagram it became it. just all advertising like a marketplace it's only marketplace for advertisements now it's just well it's not well it's still the tiktok it, it's on you if you want to if you want right, to click but it, what's right? going to happen is like that's an opportunity for companies to then be like here wear this wear this wear this and then it's just all mm -hmm. going to become mm -hmm. like oh i'm being sold to i'm being sold to whereas for like sure. tiktok's like main appeal in my opinion is that it's like very raw very like relatable type content is typically what's what goes viral on there Plus, there's dancing. Well, it's all just well, they have one of the better algorithms. They have, like, they have the a really good algorithm. It's just about like conversion rate because not all people are going to buy stuff. But like, if you have a critical mass of X million, mm -hmm. hundred million people on your platform, and one percent of them actually buy something, massive number. And yeah, like the same it's direct to consumer marketing. And, uh, you know, the entire platform is direct to consumer marketing in a way that like we just haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, prior to the digital age, like yeah. this is this is more impactful than TV commercials. In yeah. the past, I would assume. Yeah, they, they were able to gather one of the best algorithms because the way that the Chinese government works, which is direct, which is tied into TikTok, is they're able to gather all your data because everything they use is digitally bought. Like there's not a real cash exchange. Mm -hmm. So they get to see everything you buy, everything you, er, where you go, et cetera. And now that data gets shared, you know, allegedly with, with TikTok. Yeah. And now all of a sudden they have one of the better algorithms I mean, that's that they Instagram's can have. Doing. They show me sh stuff all the time from stores I've never heard of and I click on them and then I get more like that. I mean, it's the same thing, but like I don't really go on Instagram like and browse through it that much because it feels just like a magazine now. I got some stuff from Instagram this week. I got the jacket from Instagram. Yeah, I've gotten a couple things from Instagram. Yeah, I think I've bought more from Instagram than like in real life stores. Now. <laughs> there was that kid that we met at the Resorts World cash game, Antonio. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. He's like fucking massive on TikTok. Yeah, oh, I didn't know. SoFlo. So yeah, flow. I didn't know who he was. So he has like was 10 million U followers. It was on it was YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know who he was. YouTube prankster. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've heard like the name SoFlo Antonio. You but like, Soflo he played. Uh, he played on Live at the Bike way back in like 2017. Uh, he was in the, the week where it was like me, Polk, Jungle Man, Fee, and this poor kid. Off lineup. Playing he just, like, oh, was he just getting crushed? He froze. Yeah, he got yeah. whacked, obviously. Oh. He final tabled the 25K though. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I told you, Burke. Oh Remember? yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's like oh, pursuing it really seriously now. Yeah, he was he's grinding respect. in Vegas. He's, he's yeah. trying to play cash games. And yeah. stuff. Respect, respect. Wait, what? He's what? Oh, okay, never mind. Whatever. No, he final table twenty five. Okay. Good yeah. for him. And he actually there was like a controversy because he acted out of turn mm. at the final table. That's he, a, that, that's an issue. Did you, yeah. did you see that? I didn't see the what happened in general, but it happened a couple years ago in the fifty k. Yeah. Um, and it's really bad when <clears> someone acts out of turn it was, in the ICM in that in that spot like particularly it was super bad because. Brewer was like mega chip leader uh -huh. and he was, I think he was right, he was next to act right after Brewer and Brewer was facing an open. So basically he folded out of turn and there, he was the only person behind Brewer. So Brewer knows that when he reshoves his like light hand here with like right. the mega chip lead, he only has to get through the original razor as opposed to the guy behind him. Right, right, right. Yeah. It was like a huge so, spot. Yeah, yeah, those, and in those spots like, Floor needs to kind of take it really seriously and like have a penalty, even if it was a mistake. Yeah. yeah. So like there needs to be a penalty for that because the ICM value in that spot could be worth a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it changes the strategy by a bunch. Like you don't jo have to worry about getting reshoved on. You don't. So have to worry like about Josh, Josh Aria in that spot like freaked out at him because he basically had a raise fold yeah. there and like who knows? I mean, I think I forget exactly what Brewer had. I think he, he has like a re a rejam anyway, but like sure. it could have been that like because of that you know now he has to like raise fold like two big blinds at this final mm -hmm. table. Yeah. Just worth a lot. Yeah.
worth a lot, but in a situation like that where the penalties kind of have to kind of be made on the fly, because I don't really think there's anything in place yet. At least it wasn't in like during the 50k a couple years ago uh, when Savro uh, folded out a turn, but it was definitely like kind of an outrage with like okay like what are you supposed to do here he did only got a warning and there was no penalty yeah. but it needs to be stricter than that yeah there's no the penalty future. here either yeah Just like do there needs to be a time. penalty for the future yeah. in the lodge you, who was in the lodge did anyone go to that no there was like crazy penalties at the lodge series where like if you yeah they, re they retracted it did they yeah it was it was for like a week where if you folded out a turn i think the first time you got a round or a hand three, penalty the first time was three hands three and hands. The second time was a round and then yeah. the third time was like i think you get dq'd it yeah. was like insane. So that was, it's funny because it's sending the message that people are doing it as an angle, but the irony is that like the player pool is probably just like that green. Yeah. No, I was just saying like a, like a six hundred dollar buy in, right? Yeah. No, I was gonna say like the seniors event there must have been a fucking bloodbath. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, all, all the guys just getting even fucking showered turn, left yeah. and right. <laughs> Maybe that's why they retracted the penalties. Yeah, like the, final just, like, just, like, the final table is the eight guys. Who didn't it's just like seven guys playing the stand up <laughs> game together, drinking their coffee. Like, god damn it! One guy just gets all the blinds. Right, it was really funny. Yeah. All right, Stu, you get to steal the blinds for an orbit, and then we're going to move on with this. I got to get my glasses changed. It's okay, though. Take your time. You have to wait for these other guys that aren't here to fold out a turn. Yeah. Uh, what are you guys up to this week? What are you playing? Um, the down bad freeze out? I'm not Let's sure go. if I'm playing that, but you guys kind of convinced me. Uh, DB, I'm, DBF. I'm not playing it. Ooh, DBF. Yeah, the down bad invitational, the down bad freeze out. We Can't got it all. It. I'm playing the, my plan is the 5K tomorrow. Yeah. And then um, the win championship thing is like this coming weekend. Are I you think. playing a tag team? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. MGM just released a really nice tournament. I need a on tag the same team day partner. As a tag team. It's like seventeen hundred dollar one mil guarantee. I don't know. Are you playing the tag team? There's oh, yeah. also Two. a Two. very good tournament. Guys, I need a uh, tag team partner. You you'll find one, no problem. I'll find you one. There's a we good have, tournament. You have to go through a vetting process. There's a good tournament on Thursday at Aria. It's a million guarantee, thirty five hundred. Ooh. I don't know if you're aware. Ooh, did not. You've not heard aware. the ninety qualifiers from online. Uh, <laughs> they there will be other free roll winners uh, from the twenty second. So like, what is it? It's a million. So basically, the entire million guarantee. Well, no, like a third of the million that's guaranteed is going to be qualifiers. Oh, which is pretty. Strong. How does one qualify? Yeah. It, you can't any longer. It's oh, over. This, it? is, this isn't a plug. This isn't yeah, a plug can, for. You can't qualify uh, anymore. It's just the I mean, it's a, it's a loose plug it's to remind people that the event's happening, and Darren yeah. and Elias and I will be there on the 22nd to greet everybody, of course. I didn't even know this was happening. Uh, well, now you know. Yeah, that's Thursday? the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, nobody know knows, either. but there's nothing else really going on, I don't think. On Thursday? Wind doesn't start till Friday, so it doesn't overlap. How many uh, days is it? It's just one starting day. One, and it's oh like two, my two god, that's days. ballsy. I, I think it's three or four days total. Oh, okay. But I know you can play both that and Is win unless you final table it. Cash room? It's in Aria. It's in Aria. Uh, I think they have area the outside where the slots were. Uh, okay. If you final table, it's in Poker Go. Ooh. What is the, what is the oh. tag team conflict with scheduling wise? I have no idea. Where yeah, is that's why play? I don't know if I'm playing. What is the tag team Saturday? It's Sunday? It's a Sunday. There's a oh. Sunday. Not Sunday. What is this Thursday? It's I think it conflicts with the win. I think that's why I didn't want to play it. Yeah. When is Friday, Saturday, Sunday starting days, I oh. believe? The tag team is Sunday, June 26th. WSOP. Say that again? There's a 2K WSOP. Oh. A 3K? 2K. A 2K? When? They, they have a 2K. Yeah. Same day as the Aria. Is it, what That's is it? it? Like a freeze out or what? Uh, I have two It's a 2K bullets. no limit, Thursday, June 23rd. Really? That's it. But that's it. it. Yeah, but I didn't think it conflicted with anything. Well, yeah, there's, there's also a 250K going on on Thursday. Oh wait wait wait! What's what's Thursday's date? I could be the twenty third. Okay, yeah, stuff. that's right. Yeah, hmm. there's always one bracelet event. Well, the, yeah, on I, Friday there's a nine game, so like there's no real. There's the, the Colossus starts June twenty fourth this week. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's so right. Colossus I knew there was something I was skipping team. this weekend. It's for sure gonna be that Colossus. The Colossus. Why? Definitely gonna Why be that. Why would you ever skip that? Because the win is way better. The Colossus. Uh, I mean, oh, you're joking, I'm just right? trolling. Okay. Yes, I'm just trolling. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I day forward the Colossus. The so year, the year that, the year that, uh, <laughs> the, Paul, like the year that Apollo got third. <laughs> that was oh, a really fun so vlog. He's better than you. Much. Absolutely. I got like 39th. It was the most what? painful 39th. He also 39th. has a bracelet. Apollo. He does. Oh. Yeah. He was at my Where's table yours? in the shootout. I don't have one. I know. I don't win tournaments. Why don't you have one? Listen, <laughs> I, I'm 
I'm here to tell you guys, it's all facade, okay? What it's is? It's no meritocracy. The amount of work you put in only matters a little, little bit. You're not Dan O'Brien. You don't get to say this. I'm, I'm here in representation of Dan O'Brien, okay? We need, another, we need another update. His spirit embodies me. Conrad's out. Conrad got Dan O'Brien an hour ago. No, I'm saying we need, we need a Dan O'Brien update for oh. the series. Like a series update. He can, do, he can give us a crypto update. Yeah, he can give us a crypto update. <laughs> It'll be the exact same message. Yeah. yeah. Look. I know you put in all the work. I know you look great. You've been trying really hard. But unfortunately, none of that matters. Yeah. Bitcoin is 19,000 and it's <laughs> headed straight to zero. We're up today. You all put your money into Barely. a fake digital coin and you're going to pay the price for it. He's also paying the price for it. Oh. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. he stabled hard though, like early. He's just a trader, man. I he wants volatility. He doesn't care what direction it goes. Talking to him last year in, I don't know, December, November probably. And he was already mostly stabled. So he knew he's smart. He, he's, he's very smart. Stable fine. coins are crumbling around us. Every yeah, but minute. not like USDC. Yeah. Fine. Maybe for now. For, for now. now. No. Not de pegged yet. No. Tether just got an attack. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> not as scary, scary as this freeze out. <laughs> <laughs> scary times. Maybe I will go put this freeze out. It sounds like I need the hourly. Yeah, me fun. too. Yeah, honestly. you should do it. My network. Yeah, it's fun. Time. Yeah. Play tournaments. Yeah, are you friends? above winning $200,000? No, I just can't. And a bracelet? He's I, rich. He's white. He's been playing poker for 40 years. Do you know what I mean? Rich for 40 years. Anyway. <laughs> what? He's very muscular. And he's oh. rich in nutrients in his arms. Oh, yeah. yeah. Muscular. I will not muscular. stand by muscular. this gaslighting. No, it's not gaslighting when it's true. No, it's, it's true? not. We're just saying it's bad. So this is exactly what <laughs> gaslighting is. We you just start like saying not, shit. Do you think you're not muscular? <laughs> Do you no, think you're I, not white? I know I'm white. You're not white. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? He's olive. I'm olive. You're not. I'm not you're not. You can't you're change. Not. You're, yes, you're definitely rich. No. You're going to be in the 1% this year for sure. We had this discussion. No, I'm definitely not. I have made no money this year. Yeah, but that house not yet. sold Wolf. Not with this Windfall. attitude. Huh? Windfall not with this attitude. The house. Mm, that, that wouldn't do it. It's not going to be good enough. It's over 400. 400 no, such a yeah, low but, barrier for you you have you've made 400 for you 20 years this is the problem christian you don't understand how profits work when you put 400 into something and get 400 back you don't make 400 000. market zero <laughs> you market zero <laughs> you you've made way more than that you market zero don't worry no. about it i made no money look, look i understand the taxes irs is listening you got to keep it low but we we know what's really happening Cut the fucking show, Bravo. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you down at the... I keep wanting to say the Rio. The down uh, at, out. at the Palace, at the Perry's Valleys. The Perry's. We just the Palace. Thousand only on Hustler. <laughs> Can we just call it the Palace? <laughs> what? Barry's Palace? Call it Palace? What's Barry's Palace? I, I can't with him. I can't with him. What is he even saying? I don't saying? know what he's saying. Yeah, okay, I said Perry's Valleys. Can Paris we just call it the Palace? It's the same. You're trying to mix them together it's as one Paris property. or Pallies? Oh, it's one you said property. Pallis? It's just unnecessary. No, or Pallis. It sounds stupid. Just say, I'll, meet, I'll see you at Paris or Pallies. Such a Barris or Pallies. Okay. Which one do you want to do? Barris or Pallies? It's not a power couple. It's not a cute power couple name. It's, it's just Barris and Pallies. It's not bad Paris right, and not bad Pallies. It's a shared show. property. Am I, am, is it not? Paris is it, and Pallies. Is it not a shared property? You haven't read the fan fiction about I haven't read the fan fiction. No, no, no. Nah. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I got it. I ship it. All right. Maybe you can arm wrestle <laughs> Landon once we cut the stream. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, best of luck in the 5K6 Max, which you'll be playing Grayson over this 500 Grayson down bad invitation. wants to call in right now. No, he doesn't. Okay. Is he texting you? Mm hmm. I don't He's care. He's texting me. To call in? Look, I don't um, care. I don't, right. I don't want to hear the fucking racket. He can yeah. call in tomorrow. <laughs> GG, buddy. <laughs> He's like, cut the show. Tomorrow. We're done. We're I'm done. Over. We're cut, out. Cut the yeah. fucking show. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Play, like, right? subscribe. Back tomorrow, Leave maybe. a comment. Woo. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Rampage, for, for coming. Mike, thank you for, you know, never telling me your name. Appreciate <laughs> you got it. it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, true.